Athens Olympic Stadium. Madonna, you two, Springsteen have all played here and breaking records with two nights here in June this year. It was cold play. Let's hope tonight isn't about England and bad play. Greece against England. Failure has consequences. Two of the seven wonders of the world are in Greece. But don't worry, our TalkSport England commentary duo will be back home soon. Taking you through the game, it's former England captain Stuart Pearce alongside your England commentator, Jim Proudfoots. Two crumbling, dusty old relics whose best days are behind them. Yeah, I'll take that. Thanks, Adrian. And a very good evening to you. And if you cast your mind back to when the Nations League draw was made in February, it would have been difficult to prophesy how things would transpire. Just nine months ago, some might have predicted that this match would have seen Lee Carsley at the helm, but few would have come close to the makeup of the squad that's travelled to Athens. And of course, injury state, a compelling case of mitigation. But when England were drawn to come here, 11 of tonight's 23-man squad were uncapped. Two more hadn't played since their debuts as subs more than three years previously. Nine months can be an age. This week provides a huge, largely unforeseen opportunity for many. And if you shared my naivety, it would also have been tough to predict the significance of this first trip to Athens in 23 years. That this would be a must-win game to retain any chance of automatic promotion back to League A. For many, that's of little consequence, except as a means to an end. Because promotion improves seeding, which theoretically improves future qualification chances. Fail to win tonight, England will be in March's Nations League playoff and in a World Cup qualifying group, including others who've suffered the same fate. But a good week here, and Thomas Tuckle's reign will enjoy a much gentler baptism. At least on paper. England line up with Pickford in goal. Walker captains the side at right back. Conser and Gay he together at centre half for the first time, and Lewis at left back. Jones plays alongside Gallagher, Bellingham ahead of them. The front three: Madweke, Watkins, and Gordon. Greeks named ten of the eleven that started at Wembley last month. Lakadimos in goal. Rota, Mavropanos, Kuliarakis, and Simikas who replaces Yanoulis in that Wembley team. Shopis and Zafiris, Masouras, Bakasetas, and Solis with Pavlidis up front. Referee tonight, Daniel Siebert from Germany. Well, in October, a strong England side to come to Greece at Wembley. How will a weakened team fare on an Athenian night in November? Only a win will see the three Lions retain their hopes of automatic promotion. England, in all white, will kick from left to right in this first half. Greece are in all blue. And it's England that get the game underway, I'm delighted to say, alongside me, the former England captain, Stuart Pearce. Evening, Jim. Yeah, I've got to say, I've been looking forward to this uh, return leg since probably the first leg at Wembley, you know, where the Greeks come and on a very, very emotional night, that I thought they were absolutely outstanding uh, in a lot of elements of their game. So it's a big, big test for us tonight, and we'll learn a touch more about some of our young players. Yeah, I think we will. Rico Lewis in possession over on the far touchline, playing it left back again for England. The ball is played back for Pickford, who wasn't at his best by his own admission. The last time the two sides met, left out for the subsequent game in Finland, but recalled tonight. Concert finds Gay here, and it's worked forward through the midfield towards Curtis Jones. First touch for him in an England shirt as he makes his debut tonight. It was the 28th different player that England have used in this Nations League campaign, which is only in its fifth match. Still nil-nil with a minute gone, and Pickford plays out from the back towards the edge of the penalty area. And England just getting a feel of the ball at the moment. Lots of possession. Greece have hardly had a kick so far, but England haven't got out of their own half. Gehi getting it forward. Now Curtis Jones can take the ball on the half turn. And he pops it back for Rico Lewis. Out towards the far touchline for Gordon, whose pace could be a real asset for England. He's getting towards the bar. He pulls it back. It's behind Bellingham. Shot on the turn from Manweke. He's blocked. He's then cleared from the edge of the Greek box. England's slow, slow, quick, quick build up there very nearly effective and it was an excellent piece of play by Anthony Gordon down the left yeah I think we've just seen Jim what we want from our wide players there Gordon picking the ball up, not playing backwards not playing safe and taking his man on and I can assure you as a fullback, is the last thing that you want I've been a couple of Nations League results already today Austria winning 2-0 in Kazakhstan, that's another one of the League B groups and the Kazakhs relegated as a result of that. 
and the Faroe Islands won in Armenia by a golden era. So they've avoided relegation for now. It's their first competitive win in 15 games since they beat Turkey more than two years ago. We'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on elsewhere, including the other game in this group, which is of real significance, of course, Ireland, at home to Finland. And the Finns could be relegated tonight from this group. England know that unless they win, Greece are promoted. And they'll be in League A for the first time. This is actually the first time they've been in League B. No side out of the 55 in Europe have won more Nations League games than the Greeks since the inauguration of this competition. England in possession, working out towards the far touch line. The long ball forward looking for Lewis, but it's easily knocked away. And then Zafiris is brought down over on the far touch line. That's a free kick which will be taken by the Greeks on the right hand side. Midway inside the right half, we are through the opening three minutes here in Athens, and it's still nil nil. Yeah, I think the sum total we've seen for a lot of uh, possession football from England is that run by Gordon, which certainly got one or two off their seats and excited. England get a free kick of their own inside their own half. It's a Greek side, they've got a very good defensive record. They've only conceded the one goal in 451 minutes. So seven and a half hours coming into tonight. And that was the Jude Bellingham goal against the Greeks at Wembley last month. Pickford looking long, playing it through the middle. Bellingham might not have got too much at the top of his head to that. And he very nearly flicked it down towards Madweke. Just beat the Chelsea man and goes out of play for a throw that Simicast will take level the edge of his own penalty area. I've got to say, Jim, I, I don't subscribe even early on in the game, and probably especially early on in the game, why you don't turn the opposition around and, and just ask one or two questions early on. Reese has got the ball. Zafiris out of the far touch line for the right back Rotter, back from him to a very familiar figure of Dinos Mavropanos. West Ham man working four through the midfield. Zafiris back to him again you know, just outside their own box played up the right hand touch line you know, Bacasetas has dropped out into a, a wider right position from his number 10 role England win it back and hastily but effectively got it back to Pickford from Conza who was just on the stretch to make sure that he was able to play that back Walker now will serve his Conza again and he'll just slow things down inside his own half. You're listening to coverage of Greece against England in the UEFA Nations League with Carling. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. And the opening five minutes has just been a, a lot of shadow boxing and very little else really. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, we've got Madawaki playing the nearest England player to us as we uh, sit and commentate on the game. And he's shown for the ball three or four occasions. He's spun in behind and he's just done the same again. And every time an England player turns the opportunity to give him the ball, I'll be very frustrated. And in the end, he gets a ball that's a 50-50 ball. Well, barely that, he did well to make something of it. He's won a free kick. As Carl Walker rolled it in towards his feet. And he just nipped it in front of Simicas. He caught him, and the free kick will be taken by England. So this is a common recurring theme, Stuart. Why is that? Why when they do the, the video debriefs does it not get rectified in the next game well I, I think we get so obsessed with, with playing possession football and the stats and this and that it's the one thing that's frustrated me there's a nice reverse ball from Bellingham here to find that Noni Madweke will get to the byline and then pull it back and he's put it Ollie Watkins gives England the lead inside the opening seven minutes one telling ball down the touchline and Madweke took on his man got to the byline pulls it back and an early sense that Athens might be different to Wembley it's Greece nil England one well they've just proved my point as I'm as I'm half commentating on this Jim supply the ball out to Gordon and Madweke and say go and take them on either they'll spin him behind or they'll receive defeat and go and take them on and now we've scored by it after six minutes now some sages within the game will turn around and say well we had to keep possession of the ball to create that space I'm not sure we actually did it was just a forward pass basically and a good run by Badawaki so well done to him and it, that should be the springboard for us to keep supplying these wide players 
Harry Kane left out of the starting lineup. Ollie Watkins there in his place. I think that whoever was playing as England's number nine there would just have dropped off to the edge of the six yard box and would have uh, tapped it in. Well taken goal by Watkins. And a good start for England for all the possession they've had. Some end product. Ollie's fifth goal for his country. He's uh, only started six games. He's last coming against the Netherlands in such dramatic circumstances in Dortmund in the Euros and he scores here in Athens tonight and all of a sudden England will feel that they might be in business remember to retain a chance of winning the group England must win if they win by one tonight they will need to win by at least one more goal than Greece win their game at the weekend assuming that on the Sunday assuming that both win England, of course, at home to Ireland, which will be live on TalkSport. The Greeks go to Helsinki, who by that stage may well already be relegated. If England could win this by two tonight, all they've got to do is match Greece's result on Sunday. So one is good to much, much better. Early days, England dropped the ball into the midfield, flicked on by Belly, out towards Anthony Gordon. Real mix and match England team leading here in Athens with eight and a half minutes gone on TalkSport. Yeah, it certainly is. And if you're mad away, you know, you, you're saying to Cole Walker, give me the ball. Please give me the ball and I'm turning or I'm spinning without the ball and feed me in. And that certainly was uh, was how England unlocked. And, and to be honest, we have Gordon's persistence on the left and Madawaki on the right and looks a real match winner. So this is not the start that Greece were expecting. And they have that good defensive record. Remember, that's only the second goal they've conceded in 458 minutes. They thought that they, at the very least, got a throw in the right-back position. They were claiming that it should be a free kick against Rotter, but neither has been given it. And it's going to be a throw that will be taken by Rico Lewis over on the far touchline. A touchline which is a, a long way from here, it has to be said. Lewis taking a throw, drops it short into the feet of Gordon tries to supply him with a return ball he's taken a nick off a Greek player on the way out and goes out for another throw which Rico Lewis will take he's level with the edge of the six yard box nine and a half gone Greece nil England one with Ollie Watkins goal on seven minutes the difference between the two sides England can't make the most of the opportunity from that second throw it's gone out and it's a goal kick which will be taken and a yellow card has uh, been shown there Mr. Mitch Stu, sorry, I couldn't quite work out. I think it was Bellingham. I think, yeah, I think just his reaction to the referee. I think they pulled him for descent, I think. So Bellingham getting the uh, the yellow card. None of the England players in the starting lineup are a yellow card away from suspension. Greece, on the other hand, have half of their outfield players uh, a yellow card away. And the group is potentially tied if England win this by one it could go down to the two sides relative disciplinary records and Gallagher has now got himself a yellow card and that's for failing to allow Greece to restart having conceded a free kick he then just stood a yard away from the ball and went to play it so Gallagher and Bellingham both in the book is the opening 11 minutes here for him yeah and I think with what's gone on this week, especially with the pullouts and everything that's gone with that, the speculation, Harry Kane not playing, everything leading into this game, Jim, I think England really needed a good start to the game, and certainly that's what they got. Eleven minutes in, they lead by a golden hill. Ollie Watkins with the goal. If you're just joining us, Watkins starting Harry Kane, left on the bench, and no suggestion uh, when he was asked before the game about that, that Harry Kane had been left out as a precaution or because of uh, any injury or lack of fitness it is purely a footballing decision Watkins leading the line and he's already on the score sheet England leading by a golden hill four times in the past England have come to Greece and they've won all four games most recently in a qualifier for the 2002 World Cup with goals from Scholes and Beckham here and we'll have it again Bellingham laying it back for Noni Madweke. Madweke continuing his run down the right side of the penalty area. He got past his man again. It was a good recovering challenge from Shobsis, and then Kulirakis can get it away. But Madweke could well hold the key for England here, as Stuart Pearce has been saying. 
Walker runs the ball out of play for a Greek throw, but every time it goes to Madwake, it looks as though something's going to happen. It certainly does. As I say, he's got his towel up at the moment. What I like about him, Jim, he receives defeat and takes people on, but also as well, he spun maybe on three or four t- four occasions. It's so difficult to mark a player like that as a fullback because if you know he only wants it to feet, you can get touch to it. If he's spinning on occasion, it's really, really difficult. Now elsewhere in League A, Belgium taking on Italy tonight. The Italians win the group if they win and France don't, but they will be in the Nations League quarterfinals if they avoid defeat. They're a goal up in Belgium. Sandro Tonali, the Newcastle man, has scored that goal. The Belgians, for their standpoint, third in the group if they fail to win and Israel don't get a better result. They're going to be in the relegation playoffs and could well end up facing England or Greece in those playoffs. Relegation from League A, promotion from League B. Two leggy games which will take place in March. Belgium looking highly likely to be finishing third. And Norway have taken the lead in Slovenia as well. Slovenia nil, Norway won. Nusa with a goal there. As they look for their first away win in more than a year. With the Norwegians leading in Slovenia by a golden hill. In that group already today, Kazakhstan have been relegated. And Austria currently lead the way in that section. England leading here by a golden hill. Still second to Greece in the table as things stand right now. The uh, table will be separated by overall goal difference. And Greece is, is just superior. Pickford playing the ball down towards the England right-hand side. Madueke coming back to meet it. Has lost out. Chance for Costa Simicas and Liverpool to bring the ball forward. And Gallagher let into his back and shoved him to the ground. Gallagher's just got to be careful. First yellow card shown to him for delaying the restart on gentlemanly conduct and he's got to make sure that the little niggly free kicks that he's given away don't get him a second yellow. Yeah, he certainly has and as he's doing at the moment, talking to the referee, arguing the point and that's something he can't do either. I tell you, looking at England's lineup as well in comparison to the game at Wembley, Jim, in our back four we've got Walker and, and Gahey and both of those will certainly uh, be very good at dealing with any potential counter-attack threat, which we struggled with at Wembley. Bakaseta swings a free kick in. Jordan Pickford comes to meet it. Got a left hand on it and got enough on it to be able to clear the ball outside the penalty area. Greece are going to be able to rebuild in a much deeper position. Simicas sending a high, long diagonal ball for Gallagher, though, can watch that out of play. And he goes out for a goal kick, will be taken away to our left-hand side. And all things considered, a decent, solid opening 15 minutes for this new-look England team. Oh, it certainly has been, as I say, the, the contentious uh, selection. Watkins for Kane has certainly paid dividends very early on. And uh, our wide players look as though they've got the beating of, of their respective defenders. Pickford with the ball at his feet. Clears through halfway. Gallagher's first touch a little bit heavy, uh, but it still ended up going through towards Holly Watkins. Bellingham will work it out towards the left-hand side. Watkins is continuing his run forward here. Gordon coming in off the flank, and he arrowed one towards the top right-hand corner. One of the Greek defenders got his head to it to be able to block that. It was Mavropanos, and it goes out of play for a corner. Uh, but judging by the reaction of Vlakadimos, that might have been pretty close. England with the first corner of the afternoon, of the night. Yeah, really good play there. I mean, to be fair to Gordon, he was the first player on the pitch in an England shirt to actually do something to get us on the front foot, and he's certainly done exactly the same then. So the corner will be taken on the England right. Curtis Jones is showing for the short one, and he now walks away. Madweke takes a three-pace run-up and swings it in deep towards the far post off the top of the Greek head then the goalkeeper Vlakadimos punches it away back into the fray from Gordon and cleared by Mavropanos back in again from Gordon and cleared by Kuliarakis still pinball inside the box Conza with a shot and the referee's whistle goes and a free kick has been given Greece's way inside the penalty area after a real scramble I think Conza was appealing for a handball the referee saw an infringement the other way, and it's a Greek free kick inside their own box. 17 gone, England leading, courtesy of that Ollie Watkins goal 10 minutes ago here on TalkSport. Nice to it, please. Yeah, as I say, a bit of pinball there. The referee's decided there was a handball in there somewhere. I'm not sure I saw that too readily. 
but uh, Lee Carsley will be sat there rather content certainly with this one goal lead I think if we'd have ended up uh, going a goal down I think we could have punched any confidence we, we potentially had going into the game England last season did concede the first goal more often than they scored it which is pretty remarkable really so far this season when they've scored first England have won all three games Greece on the other hand have won all four when they've scored first so from that point of view first goal could be crucial tonight England have got it Madweke right hand side of the box taking on Simikas again cuts inside this time low skidding left footed shot Vlakadimos can dive to his right and make a comfortable save but it's all England a much better performance tonight than we saw in either game in October as I say it's all England because the cutting edge is coming in those wide areas and England players um, I'll tell you what I've just seen by the way Jim um, I think someone's got a laser in the crowd which I've just seen I think earlier in the game I saw it with Conte I've just seen it there on the face of uh, Bellingham well, we'll keep an eye on that the England players hoping that they don't have an eye trained on it the ball is with Gordon over on the far touchline coming in on the left hand side of the penalty area Watkins trying to peel away Gordon just ran out of room he was very well marshalled there by the Greek defender Lazaros Rota he plays his football here in Athens for AEK and that one just drifts out of play for a goalkeeper that will be taken by Vlakadimos away to the right and he finished third in the inaugural Nations League back in 2019 three games in 2021 but finished third in the group didn't win any of their six in 2023 and got themselves relegated but are they yet going to be able to win automatic promotion back into League A as a result of this first ever League B campaign leading here by a golden nil on a night where they have to win 19 minutes in it's a throw to England after a misplaced ball right across the Part of the penalty area just drifted out for a throw that Kyle Walker has taken and that looks as though it's going to cause problems with Watkins lurking with intent Greece get it away it's uh, mopped up inside the England half by first the concert and then Curtis Jones and now out towards Rico Lewis and Lewis will take it on towards the halfway line it's put under pressure by Bankasetas ball is laid back towards Gahey you think back to the game between these two a month ago and the number of counter-attacking opportunities that Greece were able to create and there's hardly been one so far I don't think there has been a, a, a single instance really of Greece being able to get the ball down the line and getting runners at the England back line when possession has been turned over but England have to make sure that that remains the case with Pavlid is dangerous in that kind of situation England will be able to bring it forward again here with Conser down towards the right flank for Madweke and again he's beaten his man and now he'll take on Simikas clever little drop of the shoulder not such a good ball in he scuffed the cross and it was easily knocked away by Kuliarakis the impressive youngster at centre half Pakasetas turns it forward there's an attempt at an overhead kick clearance to the midfield from Gallagher but although he didn't make clean contact he's back on his feet quickly enough to be able to get the ball under control and lay it back for Esri Conser still England good value for this 1-0 lead through 20 minutes on Torchman yeah, super play there by Madawaki and to be fair Simicast just can't handle him to be honest with you and the England players all they've got to do nine players have got to feed our two wide players and if they do that I think we'll win the game more than comfortably but what we do is get caught up a little bit in possession based football when the, the trick of the game is identify the weakness of the opposition and play on it time and time and time again you with talk sport Thank you for your company tonight here in Athens. Where England leading 1-0. Greece get a free kick when an advantage... Oh, in fact, it's been given England's way. It looked initially as though it had been given to Greece. And Bakasetas was mouthing off because uh, he felt as though the referee hadn't played the advantage. He's actually given the free kick against the Greek captain and then booked him for descent. So Bakasetas ends up being cautioned. He's not one of the players who will miss the trip to Finland through suspension if he gets a yellow card tonight that's three in the book already all for relatively innocuous incidents still inside the first half of the first half but only just coming up after us of course your chance to react to all of tonight's action 
on the sports bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy. Your thoughts on the team selection, on Harry Kane's omission and on the performance. And that, of course, will be interspersed with all of the reaction from the tunnel area here at Athens. England leading 1-0, and it's been a really mature, measured performance from them so far against the side who've rocketed up the world rankings and now in the yellow ratings find themselves just inside the top 20. Gallagher, playing the ball down towards Walker. Now Walker will come over the halfway line uh, in possession of Madweka to his right and he's turned back inside, much to my esteemed colleague's frustration. This is where players drive me absolutely mad. Cole Walker, with the experience he's got, he's got Madweka straight in front of him. Simicast doesn't want to come anywhere near him because he's scared stiff. Shove him the ball into his feet, man, and stay behind him. Now he plays it in towards Madweka and goes back for Walker again. But he had probably four or five yards of space, Madweke, and Walker just resisting the, the temptations, almost as if you can only play that pass ten times in the game. And even then, it still seemed a likely opportunity to play. Gallagher plays it into Madweke's feet now, and he comes back for Gallagher. Madweke would turn and spin and make a run in between left back and centre half. Then he comes back out and gets the ball into feet. It's been England's standout operator inside the opening 23 minutes, playing a massive part in the goal, scored by Ollie Watkins, which retains England's hopes of winning this group. Still all go down to Sunday. Games at 5 o'clock kickoff, incidentally, at Wembley on Sunday. We will, of course, be there. Adrian Durham with the big build up from four, and then the game starts at five. Walker getting into Manweke now. Come off the right flank and very quickly flick the ball into the feet of Curtis Jones. And he comes for Jones once more. Jones slows everything down to a walking pace, and this is a, another recurring theme of the way that England build up, that it all becomes very pedestrian with the bid that they will try and then go up through the gears pretty quickly. Jones has lost possession in the midfield. Shops this, the Cardiff City midfielder. Sends a spinning ball out towards the right-hand side for Masoras, but he can't find a way past the retreating Gordon, who can see to throw. Uh, your word in there, Jim, was build-up, slow on the build-up. Build-up means you're attempting to go forward, and at times I see our play, I'm not sure we're playing with a plan. The plan should be we'll play at one side to move their defensive shape to one side, switch quickly into the likes of Madawaki or Gordon, and then that's our point of attack. Kulirakis, centre half, in possession for Greece. Uh, today, yet another day that we've got a choice of live sport for you on the Talk Sport Network, or at least we would have if it wasn't raining out in St Lucia. But the uh, T20 international when it gets underway will be live on Talk Sport 2 and the rain continues to fall nothing happening there at the moment we've got the Talk Sport app you'll be able to keep right bang up to date with the cricket when it starts and a victory for England there and they've won that series here's Simikas making his way forward the Greek fans get to their feet haven't had many opportunities to do that so far comes out towards Rotter left footed shot from the right back was a really poor effort it's Greece's best moment of the game so far and yet still very innocuous and Pickford can wave it goodbye yeah good build up by the Greeks to be fair and when the switcher play come Rotter come inside just dragged it inside Gordon Opened the goal up rather nicely, but his left foot let him down badly. An equaliser for Slovenia in Group B3, 1-1 in that game against Norway. And Jordan Pickford just being given the hurry up by the referee, showing a, a real reluctance to restart play. England leading here by a golden nil. Still France nil, Israel nil. Italy leading in Belgium by a golden nil. And Pickford has tested the referee's patience. And I'm afraid it was obvious that yellow card was going to come because he was told by the referee and he still waited another 10 seconds. And the referee clearly perfectly at liberty to say oh, enough's enough, yellow card. I'll tell you what, the only thing that concerns me, Jim, things are going quite swimmingly here. We've shown that we can cut them open at will, but this referee is very, very card happy. Well, Lee Carsley doesn't look at all happy with the fourth official and he's uh, in the ear of Daniel Schlager. But I don't think he can have had any complaints there. No, I totally agree. Now play does restart. Carl Walker as the uh, England captain had uh, just 
been in consultation with the referee about that particular incident. Another free kick is given, and is the referee going to produce another yellow card? No, he hasn't on this occasion for a heady challenge by Walker inside the centre circle. And it just adds a little element of the unknown. The way that the referee has booked a player for descent, one for delaying a restart, and now put one for time wasting. And no problems whatsoever with the yellow card for Pickford. I think that the first two England casualties will feel very hard done by, and Bakasetas similarly felt hard done by for Greece. Is he going to book, actually put Walker there? After all, because he's now produced, he's now pulled the notebook out of his pocket, making notes. I didn't see another yellow card come up there, but you get the impression the referee might yet have a, a major part to play in this. It just feels like one of those nights. We're 28 minutes in, and Ollie Watkins' goal is still the difference between the two sides. Jim. Yeah, it certainly is. As I say, um, they look very, very clinical in these wide areas, but. The supply line's got to be there for them to go and do their magic. Watkins not seeing much of the ball, but he was in the right place, certainly, at the right time to end up scoring that goal. Greece can bring it away. Played out towards the left flank for Kuliarakis. His ball for Pickford thought about coming out, and then Gahey suggested that he should pretty quickly, and he did get there in time, and sweeps up on the edge of his own penalty area. And then plays an excellent ball forward first time towards Madweke. Madweke to his left-hand side for Curtis Jones. He's caught in possession. Wanted that fraction too long in the heart of the midfield. And Mavropanos and Rotta between them are going to be able to get it away for Greece. England much the better side through the opening half hour. So try to avoid the defeats that would be the 200th in their history in the well over a 1,000 games. Let's get it forward again. Kuliarakis down towards Simikas. Once more, the crowd rises to their feet. Ball play down the left hand side of the area. Simikas! Good save. Because he rifled it in from about nine yards out at that left hand post. And Pigford got down really quickly. Got a smart right hand to it to flick it around the post. And out of play for a corner. But that is just a warning from the Greeks that this is not over yet by any stretch of the imagination well I've got to say top play there down this left hand side by the Greeks England just overcompensating uh, tucking in too wide Madawaki's got to do a defensive responsibility at that stage and I don't think he actually did in comes a very very deep out swinging corner from Bacaset uh, Bacasetas and it's fired having been cleared straight back out to him and just as he took a touch and was uh, waiting to try and check the ball and fire a, a cross back in, Madweke wired into a challenge and won it cleanly. And it's going to be an England free kick. Bacasetas came off the worst of the two in that uh, confrontation. He's back to his feet, makes his way forward. Pickford knows that he can't take any liberties now, having already uh, received the yellow card for time wasting spots the ball down He's waiting for a little bit of movement ahead of him before firing this ball it's Greece nil, England 1 a long ball that's uh, launched through the midfield Watkins goes down a uh, suspicion that he was wrestled to the ground the referee says play on Mavropanos is going to be able to get it away gets it out towards Rotter over on the Greek right hand side Gordon doing his best to try and get back and get goal side and in doing so he's conceded a free kick and whilst England have been well on top through most of this game last four or five minutes have now been very much in Greece's favour yeah they have the Greeks just having a bit more possession and, and Graham with a little bit of confidence England have just got to batten down the hatches a little bit and make sure there's no gaps between the lines Which will be taken on the uh, Greek left hand side by Simikas. Uh, just takes it back towards halfway. And Shops is going to uh, pick it up. And now finds Mavropanos at the back and it goes out towards Rotter. Rotter working it forward. Of the, uh, the Greek right. 
Gordon trying to get to back goal side. Can't do that effectively, but when Masaurus fires across in, it hits Lewis. And goes out of play for another corner. And England are having to weather what is beginning to grow in intensity, this little storm here. Yeah, it's all part of the game, what we've got to be good at. We want to be a possession-based team. We want to have a, an attacking threat. But... 50% of the game is making sure the opposition don't score against you and we've got to be good at that so this time it's going to be a left footed in swinging delivery deep towards the far post Pickford again good piece of goalkeeping took a couple of steps back got a strong right hand to it was able to punch the ball outside the penalty area comes back out towards Rotter high ball forward from him round the back of Kyle Walker but I believe he's going to get there and he goes out of play for a goal kick that Pickford will take. Well, we go to half time. Greece nil, England one here on Talk Sport. Uh, don't forget tomorrow morning, Natalie Sawyer and Gabby Agbon Lahore will be bringing you Talk Sport breakfast. That's from six. Uh, I think most of uh, the England team here tonight will be uh, giving their reaction to, to what we've seen and you've heard. Also, if you fancy something different on your morning commute, you can check out the Chris Evans Breakfast Show weekdays from 6.30 on Virgin Radio, which you can get on DAB. Here's Simicas. Greece still asking the pertinent questions in this uh, little seven, eight-minute passage of play. Uh, but England will be able to get that one away. Batting will chase after it, and he's done his man on this near touchline. Now he can bring it forward. Watkins peeling away from him, trying to create space. Batting and goes alone, driving forward inside the penalty area. It was Mavropoulos that came across and made the challenge. And there was evidence again of that green laser pen, which you could see a, a big bright spot on the shirt of Bellingham as he made his way forward there. England ended up getting a corner out of that. Yeah, he, he just ended up uh, overrunning it, not realising that the, the cavalry are coming back over the hill to uh, attempt to make a challenge and uh, probably didn't have a decent opportunity to get his pass away to Watkins on that occasion, Jim. There's a corner which will be taken by Noni Madweke on the uh, England left-hand side. Sister referee just leans over him to make sure that the uh, ball is spotted down correctly. England with everybody for You can see the laser pen again on the, the athletics track on this near side as the corner comes in from Madweke. It's headed high up in the air. A once, twice, awkward bounce. Mavropanos got something on it. And then they'll try and be able to bring it away over on the far touchline with Zafiris. And now the counter-attack could be on, but chasing after Pavlidis stood a little chance of being able to get there ahead of Pickford, who comes out and sweeps up. Siopsis working it back out towards Rotter on the right-hand side of the midfield. That can set us back towards halfway. And then Donald in the opening 25 minutes without creating too many clear-cut goal-scoring opportunities after Ollie Watkins gave them the lead. But Greece have had the last two or three sides of goal. And they're on the front foot again here. They're warming very slowly to their task here in Athens tonight. Ball play back towards Rotter. England with enough bodies back to be able to smuggle it clear from the edge of their own penalty area. Watkins will chase after that. And it's good industry from him. Chasing what he knew was going to be a lost cause. And an opportunity for Greece to pick it up and play it back forward again out towards the far touchline. Level with the edge of the England penalty area. Ball is worked back. Back to Setas with a left footy shot from distance. Just spilt a little by Jordan Pickford, but he got his body behind it and spilled it away from the left hand post and then was able to gather at the second attempt before the ball went out of play for a corner. Yeah, decent hands there by Pickford. Nice soft hands. Just parried it forward slightly and dropped his body on it. Uh, quite a distance out probably just creeping inside that near post Pickford's got it again ball back at his feet just gives his hands a little clap together as he uh, prepares to receive the ball and then he launches out towards the far touchline and Gordon tries to spin his man but past Rotter Mavropanos comes across to sweep up behind him slides in and puts it out of play for a throw to England 15-18 yards inside the Greek half it's half an hour since England scored. There haven't been too many chances for Greece to get themselves back on level terms. Simicas with an effort well saved by Pickford, the closest that they've come. It's Consa. Lays the ball down towards Carl Walker. Walker driving it forward and Watkins herring after it, but it's going to go all the way through the penalty area. And Vlacodimos shepherds it out of play 
for a goal kick that'll be taken by the Greeks away to their right hand side they've only beaten top 10 opposition twice in the last 10 years although clearly one of those was at Wembley last month they also won a friendly away to the Netherlands back in 2016 their home form really good just two home defeats Greece in the last 24 games one of those coming against Spain and the other against the Netherlands so it's uh, an impressive catalogue of results that they've been able to build up at home but at the moment England are leading England for their part have only won two of the last ten games that they've played on foreign soil against top 20 opposition in the world they're leading this one all is worked for by Kuliarakis Siopsis can pick it up in the midfield Akisetas drops deep again Usually the link-up play between midfield and the forward line. He's worked it out towards the right-hand side for Rotta. Ball fired in from him. Pavlidis, the only man that he could try and hit. He came close to finding him, but a good quick hands from Jordan Pickford as the uh, ball bounced off the playing surface into his midriff. And he gets the ball out very quickly, and England can then win a free kick towards halfway. Seven to go to half-time. Uh, I've got a trivia question for you, incidentally. One for you to think about. Uh, well, maybe reiterated again during the halftime interval we'll give you the answer in the opening 10-15 minutes of the second half but Curtis Jones a player tonight has the opportunity to score a debut goal for England who are the last five players to score goals on their England debut one for you to think about last five England goal scoring debutants and just to give you a clue the last of those five was back in 2015 or the first depending on which way you look at it but that's the oldest of those five the player back in 2015 four since then will give you uh, the odd clue at half time will give you the answer in about half an hour's time something like that ball down on the England right hand side Nonny Madweka a chance for him to come towards the edge of the Greek penalty area back from him to Walker to Madweka again Madweka outside the penalty area for Jude Bellingham Walker can come forward now and there are when he looks up three England players inside the box to try and hit instead on the firing across and he's played it back for Madweke Madweke goes back for Jones Jones to Concert again and back for Esri Concert again and England from a, a good position of territory deep in the Greek half have slowly worked the ball back and just negated that position of advantage that they garnered yeah, I think there's a frustration there for me. You, you can't have a wide player in a 1v1 situation and the ball, four passes later, end up with your centre half on the halfway line. Gallagher lays it back for Jones. Jones to Mark Gahey, it's 15 yards outside the penalty area. England next in action, remember, Sunday tea time, 5 o'clock, live here on Talk Sport, game that might not have an awful lot on it it could have plenty on it but this thing stand right now it will have that island game still nil nil they're at home to Finland the other game in this group this one one nil to England with five minutes to go to half time Gallagher back towards Gahey and England have uh, regained a, a, a modicum of control after that sort of seven or eight minute spell of decent Greek pressure yeah they have as I say they look they've wrestled momentum back from the Greeks certainly there's been one or two warning signs that the Greeks on that turnover if the warning signs weren't there a couple of months ago at Wembley what have England done better tonight than they did that day um, well they've got two players in their back line that have got pace and read the game well in Gahe and Walker to, to stop the counter attack they've not given the ball away in cheap areas to encourage the counter attack and more importantly they put the Greeks on the back foot in wide areas by our two wide players having the beating of the full backs comfortably but what we've done now is turn around and let them off the hook a little bit by playing backwards too readily Madwake this time dropped deep and he tried to chip the ball forth for the advancing Gallagher but the men in blue have comfortably won it back in the midfield Zephyrus and Siopsis will play it out towards the far touch line where Rotter was waiting for it and Masaurus delegated the responsibility to the full back and Masaurus continues his run down the touch line and can't find him with a, a chip ball which didn't clear Rico Lewis and England gathered away on the edge of their own penalty area. three to go to half time 
And Stuart Bellingham in the midfield again for England. To his right-hand side for Walker. Walker to Bellingham, to Gallagher, to Jones. And Connor Gallagher, Connor Gallagher again. Should have fresh legs. Not really featured too much in the very recent pass for Atletico Madrid. He has scored a couple of goals for his new club this season. Anthony Gordon coming in off the England left will lay it back again. Bellingham makes a, a run from the centre of midfield out of the inside left channel. That creates a little bit of space for England to work coming down towards this near side there, right. Three to go to half time. And the crowd has by and large been silenced by that early England goal, which clearly has done a fair bit of restore some confidence for Lee Carsley's man ball chip forward here by Pickford chested down by Bellingham and then flick with his right foot down towards Walker he was fouled by Zafiris uh, England have still got the ball so play continues Walker back to Bellingham who sends a beautiful low flat cross out towards Rico Lewis Lewis can make his way forward Here's Anthony Gordon coming away from the edge of the penalty area. Watkins tries to get in there, he's gone down, just outside the box. Referee allows play to go on for now. Manweke continues his run, right-hand side of the area, he's still got it. Played in by Bellingham, motions to cross and then checks back out. Ball right on the whitewash of the right-hand side of the box. As Manweke plays it back for Walker, Gallagher comes forward to get himself involved as well. Still England maintaining possession, but again... The, the recurrence of this frustrating habit to work it backwards via two or three passes some 40 yards towards halfway Gallagher to Walker uh, Walker might just play the way that he's facing he's scampering back inside his own half here for a moment and then eventually can turn and work it forward where Madweke gets the better of Simicast and wins a free kick just inside the England half 44 gone 1-0 to him yeah as I say in a half where we've done a lot of things right I think if I'm going to be critical, I would say a little bit of game intelligence to actually realise where we are hurting the opposition. We've we come to a situation where we play backwards and sideways too readily. And you can see the Greeks, certainly in the fullback areas, breathe a sigh of relief every time we do that. The possession 60 40 in England's favour. In the final 30 seconds of the first half, there shouldn't be an awful lot of time to be added on at the end of this first period, a maximum of two minutes, but possibly only one. And England are on the front foot again with Madweke. Madweke on the right-hand side of the box. Can't find a way past Simicas, who's happy to show him inside. Walker is there, just popping up and down on the right-hand touchline, waiting to be played in. Goes towards Walker, Walker then works it back for Curtis Jones. There will be, sure enough, two additional minutes at the end of this first period. With England leading 1-0 here on TalkSport. Gallagher just threads the ball through towards Bellingham, who steps away from one challenge and then very cleverly works a low cross in through the legs of Siopsis. Not make them beautifully, but nobody could get there. And Greece will be able to clear with Pavlidis. Ball then brought down very nicely on the left flank by Solis. But England on halfway have got it back with Walker. Walker to Jones. In towards Gordon. Back towards Colin Gallagher again. Gallagher to Bellingham. Bellingham midway inside the Greek half. Back from him to Noni Madweka. To Kyle Walker. Walker to Gallagher. Back towards Walker once more. Ireland lead Finland 1-0. Just going into first half stoppage time there. It's an Evan Ferguson goal has given the Irish the lead. Ireland leading Finland by a goal to nil. And that means that Finland will be relegated. And Ireland will just try and retain hopes, of potentially depending on what happens here, of finishing second in the group and making the promotion playoffs themselves. But as things stand right now, England comfortable here and have engineered a situation where they can get themselves back in contention for automatic promotion. Ball is played down towards Rico Lewis on the England left-hand side. Lewis will uh, work it back towards the edge of his own penalty area. Pickford can pick it up. Pickford taking a touch. He's under pressure. Drives it forward towards halfway. Gordon with his back to the direction of play. Spins and he's played in by Lewis. Had a great chance here for Watkins. But he couldn't get the ball out from underneath his feet. And Kuliarakis comes back. 
and makes potentially a goal-saving challenge. What a glorious opportunity for England to double their lead just on the stroke of half-time. Yeah, it certainly was. As I say, it was uh, Pickford who was under pressure, was forced to play it forward quickly. Um, I'm not sure he would have done otherwise. And then from that moment on, England on the front foot, Watkins should have done a lot better, Jim. Just couldn't get the ball out from between his feet. the last action of the first half. But so far, so good in the grand scheme of things. A fair bit to admire about England's performance, not least the way that Lonnie Manweke took control of the early stages of the game and set up Ollie Watkins with the goal. That seventh-minute strike, still the difference between the two teams. And the Wembley defeat might yet be avenged here in Athens. Greece nil, England won at the break. Well, it was so exciting uh, from the off from England, pretty much. It scored so early on, the wide players were getting involved. In fact, I was about to go into some sort of monologue about, yeah, 66 World Cup winners were wingless wonders. But boy, have we had some good wide players since then. Barnes, Waddle, McManaman, and Anderson, Beckham, Saka, Stephen, Steve Coppel, Harry Hodges, a, a wide midfielder. We had some really good players who got out wide and either created or scored or crossed or cut inside, but they really tormented fullbacks. And that's what Gordon and, and Madwaki were doing it's what led to the goal as well on this right hand side with Noni Madwaki and you have to applaud that that really was Stuart Pearce the way forward for England they were making heavy inroads Gordon and Madwaki even in those first five minutes it was a joy to watch it certainly was and you know it took a while to get there I always think shove it out to your wide players very early on as soon as you possibly can and let them have a run at a fullback it tells you everything straight away and it took us six or seven minutes to to get involved in something like that but when we did Gordon was the first one to do it went past his man Madawaki went past his man on several occasions creating a goal and the thing is we've sort of eased into the game where slow and backwards and sideways is efficient I don't think so. It should be like a boxing match. You put someone a punch on someone's chin and you rock them. You don't back away then and run around the ring and look pleasant. You go straight after them again. I think if we'd done that a little bit more, bear in mind we got to win by two clear goals. Yeah, indeed. And indeed, that first five minutes was brilliant, but really not the full story of the first half. So let's take a look at that first half action. Thanks to Carly. Halftime highlights on Talk Sport with Carly. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. So what did go wrong? I mean, I'm looking at Carl Walker, Stuart, and I'm thinking he should be playing for Warrington Wolves because he just goes backwards and sideways all the time. I don't like that innuendo, but I will take your point and, and respond. Sometimes, and there's been, you know, I've seen it at major tournaments where I think the wide player needs more support from Carl Walker to burst past him to create space. Sometimes I, I wish I had an earpiece in, in his mind and say, just keep giving the ball to the wide player and supporting him from behind. He's the key. Don't play backwards. Don't play sideways. Shove it into his feet as quickly as you possibly can. That's the only information he wants. If you're the manager in the dressing room now, you say our two wide players have got the beating of their full players. When they receive the ball, don't turn and come back unless they double up on you. If you're one-on-one, -on -one, you go and take them on. Fullbacks, when you shove them the ball and make sure you do every time they're available to do so. Encourage them, get after them, and shout, go on, take him on. That's all you've got to do in the game. And sometimes I wonder about game, real game understanding. You Why know? don't they do it? Kyle Walker's not inexperienced. What do you, what he is, and you mentioned a little bit in, in, in the first half there about keeping possession. That's what he's told to do at Man City. He's told to go sideways and backwards, but actually with this England side... It's probably better to get the ball forward and out wide, give Madwaki something to run onto. 100% it does. And I've got to say to, to Nonny, he has made some brilliant angles to receive. He's always on to receive the ball, touching the uh, whitewash on the touchline. And he's spun in behind, as we mentioned in the first 15 minutes, three or four times. You as a fullback, it's your responsibility to feed him and encourage all those movements. Um, just a, a quick one. The referee's made a name for himself, booking Bellingham. Pickford's yellow was stupid. Conor Gallagher was stupid as well. Um, and then committed a foul shortly after being booked. I don't think the referee has been great. Ollie Watkins has got a goal. But had he knocked in the second when he was clean through at the end there, that really would have silenced anybody. But there's still a question. I think. Yes, he's on the score sheet. Harry Kane would have scored that goal. So it's not exactly been proved right. The Kane out 
Watkins in was the correct decision, is it? Well, listen, at the moment, when you get yourself on the score sheet within the first 10 minutes, um, the manager can turn around and say, what, what a good selection that is, was from me. But the bottom line is what to say, Ollie Watkins will get more involved in the game if our wide players receive the ball more, take the opposition on and put the ball across the face of goal. And Ollie Watkins, like he did, great movement to pull off, as you identified, was available just to tap it in the net. Yep, England lead by a goal to nil. That was all thanks to Carling. Half-time highlights on Talk Sport with Carling. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. OK, let's find out what exactly is happening with the cricket. If anything, uh, here's Sam Allard. Yep, we've had the toss, Adrian. Uh, England have won the toss. They will bowl first. The toss supposed to happen uh, half seven UK time. It happened a short a short while ago, so it was delayed by about an hour. Uh, play to start nine o'clock UK time. Uh, England win it. They'll bowl first. One change as Ray and Ahmed comes into 11 instead of Adil Rashid. So England go with Salt, Jacks, Butler, Livingston, Bethel, Curran, Mosley, Overton, Archer, Rayan and Sakiba Moon. A victory for, for England would make it 3-0 and seal the series. First ball will be at nine o'clock UK time. Live commentary on TalkSport 2. England win the toss. They bowl first. Sam, thanks very much. And you can listen to that on TalkSport 2. Just download the TalkSport app for free. You can swipe between TalkSport and TalkSport 2 or tell your smart speaker to play TalkSport 2 for the third T20 West Indies against England live on TalkSport 2. England lead 1-0 here. Let's get the halftime odds with Labrooks. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. Get money back as a free bet up to £10 if one leg of your football 5 plus hacker lets you down. Free match straight line hackers only. Odds of 3 to 1 or greater. 18 plus gamblerware.org. So Greece nil, England one, Greece to win 12 to 1. Draw is 18 to 5. England to win it 4 to 1 on those. The latest odds with Labrooks 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. Odds update on Talk Sport with Labrooks. Supercharge your odds with our odds boost button. Selected markets applies to first 50 pounds of stake. Terms apply 18 plus GambleAware.org. First game back in the uh, Premier League season after the international break is Leicester Chelsea week on Saturday. It's lunchtime on the Saturday, and that means of course it is live. And exclusive on Talk Sport from 11 a.m. at the King Power Stadium with Rashmin Chowdhury. That's a week on Saturday. Leicester Chelsea in the Premier League. Live and exclusive on Talk Sport. Second half coming up live here in Athens. England lead 1-0. Kick, kick off on Talk Sport with Labrooks. Supercharge your odds with our odds boost button. Selected markets applies to first £50 pounds of stake. Terms apply. 18 plus. Gamblerware.org. Plus Gamblerware.org. CEF. Ever wondered who we are? Well, we have over 400 branches across the UK and Ireland. We're online, in-app, and our CEF catalogue is your go-to for everything electrical. We have over 3,500 experts to help with any electrical queries, and we stock over 44,000 electrical products, from power tools and cables to renewables. So, if you didn't know who we are, you do now. CEF. Your electrical experts. If your client is not happy with the quality of your work and wants compensation, because they allege it's amateurish, unprofessional and childlike, his cooks could help protect you. The story of your business, underwritten by his cooks business insurance, subject to already holding a relevant his cooks policy and subject. Policy eligibility, terms and conditions. <laughs> this weekend, the Three Lions are back in action against the Republic of Ireland, and TalkSport Bet have got a back of the net offer for all new customers. If you sign up via the app or mobile, opt in, bet £10 at evens or more on any football market within seven days, we'll give you £30 in free bets to use on football. For this and other outstanding offers, download the TalkSport Bet app and sign up today. TalkSport Bet, belting broadcaster, bring it on, bookie. 18 plus free bets expire in seven days. Terms and conditions apply. Gambleaware.org. In the UK, there are nearly three million lost pensions. Find us. At AJ Bell, we're on a mission to reunite you with yours. In fact, every time we, every time we track down a pension, we ring a bell. It's really quite fun. If you love the sound of bells, it's definitely not a little annoying. Can we turn the music up a bit? These bells are doing my head in. Open the account today and let us help find your long lost pension pots. AJ Bell, feel good investing. Pension criteria apply. The value of your investments can go down as well as up. Listen, it's headed this way. Can you hear it? 
That is the unmistakable sound of a door sensation sweeping the nation. Because in People's Postcode Lottery's December draws, you could win a share of our biggest ever prize pot. £32.5 million. Pounds. Own it, rent it, any door can enter. So join in with this lot and get your door in the draw by signing up before midnight on the 1st of December. People's Postcode Lottery manage lotteries on behalf of good causes. 18 plus conditions apply. Play responsibly. Not available in Northern Ireland. Andy Goldstein and Darren Bent on TalkSport Drive with Motorpoint. Destination sports conversation fueled by unfiltered opinion with quality guests as standard and a couple of motor mouths. Something's not right, is it? That's rubbish. It's the daily radio road trip that takes you to the farthest corners of the nation's football fanscape. I'm just in my flat, chilling out. Yeah, I think you might be my favourite so far, Martin. Have a wonderful <laughs> afternoon. TalkSport Drive. Tomorrow afternoon from four on TalkSport with Motorpoint. There's no car like a Motorpoint car. Coverage of the UEFA Nations League live on Talk Sports with Carly. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. From the touchline to the terraces. Of course, the basic goal it is. Kick off international special. What a moment! On Talk Sport. Two of the seven wonders of the world are in Greece. But don't worry, our Talk Sport England commentary duo will be back home soon. There's a nice reverse ball from Bellingham here to find that Noni Madueke will get to the byline and then pull it back and he's put it. Ollie Watkins gives England the lead inside the opening seven minutes. This season, when they've scored first, England have won all three games. Greece, on the other hand, have won all four when they've scored first. So from that point of view, first goal could be crucial tonight. England have got it. Ball play down the left-hand side of the area. Simicas! Good save. Because he rifled it in from about nine yards out. So far, so good in the grand scheme of things. A fair bit to admire about England's performance. And the Wembley defeat might yet be avenged here in Athens. Greece nil, England won at the break. It's kickoff on TalkSport with Labrooks, 18 plus beat Gamble aware. Dot Org England leading 1 0. Ireland are 1 0 up in uh, Dublin against Finland. Evan Ferguson's goal, first goal for Ireland for 11 months, a header. Finland have hit the woodwork twice in that first half in Dublin, though. But as things stand in England's group, which is obviously also Ireland's group, uh, then the Republic of Ireland will be condemned to a relegation playoff with a league C side. As things stand, Finland will be relegated. And we'll have to wait until the final day to work out whether England or Greece are going to win the group and which one will have to go into a playoff with a League A side. Now, remember, the sports bars open for business this evening. Jamie O'Hara, Jason Cundy taking your calls after 10 o'clock. Phone lines are open now. So, England fans, what are you made of the performance? No Kane, no problem. So far, is that your thoughts? And, of course, Faker Others will be bringing you all the interviews from the tunnel as well. Me, Stuart and Jim will be doing the England debrief on the TalkSport YouTube channel. Marks out of 10 for the England players will be on TalkSport.com very shortly after the full-time whistle, and there'll be a video of that somewhere as well as the evening goes on. But the number for the sports bar this evening with Jamie and Jason, 03717 Let me tell you what's happening in terms of live football on the TalkSport network this coming weekend. Obviously, there's no uh, Premier League, no Championship. League One on Saturday, Lincoln are in the playoff places. They go to Exeter. We have a decent home record. That's a 12.30 kickoff, and we've got live commentary of that with the only radio station that takes the EFL seriously enough to bring you live commentaries. That's followed by sixth against third in League One, Stockport against Wrexham. Both of those League One games will be on TalkSport 2. On TalkSport in the WSL, it's a North London derby, Spurs-Arsenal. That's a 1.45 kickoff. If Spurs win, they go just two points behind the Gunners, who are currently in fourth spot. And after that, it's a huge WSL game. Top of the table, Man City go to the only side left with a 100% record. And that's Chelsea, who played a game fewer than City. That's live on TalkSport 2. 5.30 kickoff. WSL Merseyside Derby Sunday on TalkSport 2 at 3. And your TalkSport England team will be back at Wembley for the final Nations League group game. England-Ireland. That's a 5pm kickoff on Sunday afternoon. We'll be with you from 4pm at Wembley Stadium for that breakfast tomorrow morning with Natalie Sawyer and Gabby Agbonlahor among the guests Danny Mills and live from Athens our England correspondent Faker others and say O'Hara and Cundy coming up on the sports bar Leicester Chelsea week on Saturday is the first game back when the Premier League resumes it's live and exclusive and only on Talk Sports 
Uh, Jim sent a uh, little trivia question earlier. I think it's since 2015, the five players who've scored on their England debuts. That's correct, yeah. Okay, so... How are you getting on with it? Well, the one I knew straight away was Ollie Watkins. Scored on his England debut, correct? Yeah, so he was the last one to do it. He's the most recent one to do it. Okay. Uh, beyond that, I, I was absolutely certain of Ollie Watkins. Beyond that, struggling a little bit. Stuart? Did Bellingham? No, he didn't. No. That's one down, mate. No. So ruled that. We've lost so our in, life there, mate. So Cheers. in terms of a clue, there is one of the other four that you haven't got yet is here in Athens tonight. The other three aren't. But the other three are all still playing in the Premier League. Since 2015? Yes. Okay. Oh, since 2015. Now, that's really interesting. When did Harry Kane make his debut for England? I would guess about 2015. I'd say Harry Kane then. Yeah, Harry Kane. Come on. So Kane and Watkins and, and three more. Okay. You still want some thinking time. Okay. And when are you going to give the answer? I'll give the answer, answer about uh, sort of Sunday. <laughs> Four o'clock. 12 or 15 minutes into the second half, something like that. I'm going to have a wild guess at one. You don't have to give the answer yet if you want to leave it open. But I'm going to say Marcus Rashford as one. But we'll uh, leave that open. I'm not, I don't want to lock that in. I'm not totally convinced by that one. Uh, the uh, players are heading out for the second half. England got off to a flyer with an early goal from Ollie Watkins, who is in for Harry Kane from the start and he rewarded Lee Carsley with the goal that means it's Greece nil England won as the players make their way onto the field and there's an important change for England, it's another full debut for a player under Lee Carsley here in Athens tonight here's your commentary team for the second half Greece nil, England won with former England captain Stuart Pearce and Talk Sports England commentator Jim Proudfoot. And it's the 20-year-old left-back Lewis Hall who has come on for his debut. He only made his England under-21 debut back in September. He's won four caps for the 21s and he's come on here to replace Esri Konsa, which will see Kyle Walker play at centre-half alongside Gahey. Lewis has gone out to right-back and Hall will play at left-back. Stuart, what are your thoughts on that, Jay? Well, uh, <laughs> I would say there must be an injury there. I, I can't see why you would make that change. When I saw Hall warming up, I thought it'd be a straight swap, to be quite honest with you, uh, for Lewis. But that's not the case. So obviously injury has struck that. And Walker, Walker knows the position well enough, so he should be able to deal with that. And the pace of Walker and Gahey in that area will be a good thing, I think, to stop the counter-attack. So we're back underway. And Greece in all blue trailing by Golden Hill kicking from left to right and England in all white with this remodelled back line on a day when the whole team's been remodelled anyway but Walker alongside Gay at centre half Lewis at right back and Lewis Hall at left back 20 year old Winchester born lifelong Newcastle fan now a Newcastle player who has really impressed this season starting eight of the Geordies 11 Premier League games and now playing for England before he turns 21 and the young blonde head defender makes his way over towards the touchline here is he going to take a throw he is a one by England all looking for options he's got his club teammate Gordon ahead of him down the, the left hand touchline but instead he He's throwing it back towards Mark Gahey. Now, there was an incident in the first half where Conte just picked up a, a slight knock. He had to change his shirt. There was a little bit of blood in evidence, and I don't know whether it's as a, as a result of that that he hasn't come back out for the second half. Walker, very nearly caught in possession, trying to play out from the back. He recovered, regained his nerve, and he can work it down towards Hall again. Hall back to Gahey and in turn back for Jordan Pickford hoping tonight for his 33rd international clean sheet launched forward again by England and then played back to Pickford once more just controls it inside his penalty area and this patient ultra patient build up the uh, hallmark of England really these days as the ball is over on the right hand side play back England have got it again 20 yards inside their own half and now Walker will look long high ball four from him out towards the far touch line and headed out for a throw which will be taken on the England left hand side yeah the game just 
taking shape as such. I think England are quite happy to move the ball around as they did in the first half. But it'll be interesting to see as the game goes on, Jim, whether they chase this second or even third goal. Pickford gets it forward towards halfway. Headed down by Masoras, brought under control. Jones is there to mop up. Jones, now one of two debutants in the England team today, with Madweke starting his first game. It's very much a new look team that Lee Carsley has fielded. Here is Jones, back inside his own penalty area, trying to survive the press. OK, he gave him a horrible ball back. And Jones did really well to deal with it, and England have got it safe. They've got it out towards the right-hand side for Rico Lewis. Gehi immediately raised a hand by way of apology and for putting the Davids on in all kinds of bother there. England have got it out towards Madueke. He's chipped it inside the penalty area. Little flick header. Comes back out towards Anthony Gordon. Deep across him from him, he's headed away. Lewis is in there on the edge of the penalty area for England. Plays it back for Hall. Hall out of the England left again. Another opportunity for Gordon to try and run at Rota. Played across the edge of the box towards Bellingham. Bellingham will turn and he'll come back outside the penalty area in conjunction with Watkins, but Holden can't work in tandem and it's brought away by Greece. They don't get too far. Bellingham winning it back. Walker will play it through the centre circle towards Lewis. England leading by a golden hill. Four minutes gone here on Talk Sport in the second half. Madueke to Lewis again. Lewis 20 yards outside the penalty here. Madueke rolling down the right hand side of the box, but he wasn't quite there but to be able to find his man. England have won it back. Watkins, running into his right, couldn't find him. Cleared by Mavropanos. Horn is up there, it's done well to win it. Bellingham onto his right foot, trying to thread it through towards Watkins, but it's clear. And Gehi steps up from the defensive line, and he can now bring it forward. He almost finds himself as the, the left winger here for England. Good possession at the start of the second half for England, taking the sting out of the situation, taking the, the noise out of the crowd as they did from very early on in the first half as well. And Greece have hardly had a touch since the restart. Been a little bit loose from both teams in many ways, you know. Attacks have sort of fizzled out because of a uh, lack of quality of a pass in some ways, but England will be happier with that because of the scoreline. And Bellingham's foul as uh, he came back, Gallagher will help him back to his feet. And that's a free kick 20 yards outside the England penalty area. Leading 1 0. The other game in this group still 1 0 to Ireland. And they played nine minutes of the second half, so they're about four minutes ahead of us. The group, the, uh, group at the moment, Greece 12, England 12, Ireland 6. They'll be in a relegation playoff, and Finland 0 will be relegated. Left-hand side of the box, England bringing it forward again. Gordon to Gallagher. Gallagher to Curtis Jones. Jones gets it out towards Nani Madweke. Madweke dropping his shoulder, turning onto his right foot, then back onto his left. Can't get across in, but he has got support. The ball goes back towards Rico Lewis. Lewis in turn through the centre circle of Mark Gahey. And Gahey will be more than happy just to use the emergency exit behind him and find Jordan Pickford. Pickford out towards Walker now playing at centre half and back from him to Gahey. This is the England team then at the moment. Pickford in goal. Lewis, Walker, Gahey and Hall, the back four. Gallagher and Jones, then Bellingham ahead of them. And Madweke, Watkins and Gordon, the front three. For the Greek team in a moment with Anthony Gordon in possession. He's worked it back for Hall. And the blonde haired fullback finds Pickford. Pickford taking a touch, controls it with his left foot, chips it out towards the far side of the penalty area for Gahey. Gahey to Lewis and England work it forward, but can't find Madweke with it. And a chance for the Greeks to bring it forward again with Simicast. Played inside the area, Pavlidis, right from an effort from him, takes an inflection. Goes down towards the corner flag, Pickford can keep it in easily and then play it out towards Hall. Greece with Black and Demos in goal, Rota, Mavropanos, Gulliarakis, Simikas, Zafiris and Shopsis, Masaurus, Bakasetas and Solis. And Pavlidis has scored the two goals at Wembley, leads the line. It's Carl Walker coming forward again, 92nd cap for his country today. Walker out towards the right hand touchline. England's possession has been really good in this second half. Haven't done an awful lot with it, but important, as we mentioned, just to take the sting out of the, the game, really, in the opening exchanges of this second period. 
Yeah, we've certainly done that. As I say, we, we've bossed the possession. There is no doubt for, for the entirety of the game in the main. Gordon for Jones. Adam Adweke. Adweke travelling, gliding effortlessly inside the penalty. He's pulled it back. Rico Lewis! And the shot is saved in the near post and will drift out for a corner. Yeah, any good efforts that are coming, they're coming from that right-hand side, Madawaki. Um, really good play there, good switch of play. Identified a sort of one-on-one -on -one situation, and then Simicat just cannot handle him. Probably uh, Rico Lewis should have done slightly better. Uh, Lewis, the player who's got a couple of Premier League goals in his career, He's still waiting for his first in his fledgling international career. So eight minutes into the second half, Greece nil, England one. This is only England's second corner of the game. And it's going to be taken by Anthony Gordon from the near post. Nikodimos can punch it away. Out towards Nani Madweke. Right footed ball in from him. Little flick out of, Oh, it's off the inside of the post. And England can't take advantage of the situation. Just a chance out of nothing. Looks as though he's an innocuous ball back inside the penalty area. And a little flick out of course. All kinds of problems. Colin Gallagher. Back for Gordon. Gordon's got it again, level with the edge of the box. Back from him to Hall. Jupani is so close to scoring England second. Eventually the ball goes out of play for a Greek throw. You sense that that would have killed it. It certainly was. I think another goal and that will they'll put the lights out of the Greeks. I really do, especially with the possession that, that England are bossing at present. The goalkeeper almost gave up on it, didn't he? Very close, it's a measured header from distance. Back off the inside of the post into relative safety. Now Greece will work it for Pickford's out early and can throw himself on the ball on the left-hand side of the box to make a comfortable stop. You're listening to coverage of Greece against England in the UA for Nations League with Carling. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. And after this game, our England correspondent Faye Carruthers will bring you all the reaction from the tunnel. Before Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy open up the sports bar from 10 o'clock UK time. You can have your say on national radio to this England performance. What you've made of the team selection tonight, and what you've made of those that have been on the field, what you've made of Lee Carsley's input. All with you on the sports bar. 037172334. And don't forget as well, you can check out Talksport's YouTube channel for all the latest England content including interviews with the likes of Liverpool midfielder Curtis Jones. Great to hear his thoughts, incidentally, on the new Liverpool manager, Arne Slot, this week. You can also hear the England debrief with myself and Stuart and Adrian Durham as we review tonight's events here in Athens. That's the Talk Sport YouTube channel. At the moment, there might be a, an unaccustomed air of Durham positivity. We're ten minutes into the second half and England are leading by a golden L. Stuart and I always have a sweep on what his marks out of 10 will add up to over the, the 11 players. And it might be a little bit higher than normal. Greece are going to make changes. There's going to be a triple change as they try and get themselves back into this game. Pelkas, Yanidis, and Yanoulis are the players that are going to be coming on. Fodis Yanidis, the Panathinaikos striker. Scored three goals in the two games in September. A couple against Finland here. He scored in Dublin as well. Missed last month's game through injury. But he will come on and will hope to score for a fourth successive home fixture. Also coming on into the midfield, Dimitris Pelkas, who plays his club football in Turkey. They had a, a loan spell at Hull a couple of years back. And Yanulis who played more than 100 games for Norwich, but left in the summer for Augsburg, comes on to replace Simikas at left-back. So a triple change being made by Greece 11 minutes into the second half. Yeah, and uh, I think Simikas will be absolutely delighted to come off. He's been run ragged when Madawaku's decided to go and take him on, that is for sure. I just wonder about this game, Jim, whether it's ticking along nicely, England are in full control, but if the Greeks do score, are we going to regret not chasing the game a bit harder? Um, certainly in the first half and maybe in the second half as well. So a big ovation as you can hear for Ioannidis as he comes on. 
England in possession with a throw. Jones finding Madweke. And Greece pick it up and fire a left footed shot over the penalty, over the uh, bar from distance from Crystal Solis. And it bounced on lane six of the running track behind Jordan Pickford's goal. There has been a wicket in the cricket in St Lucia. Watching for talk sport is Sam Allen. Two wickets for England, Jim, in the first over. A uh, run out, Shea Hope gone for four. Brilliant fielding by Jacob Bethel. Then Sakiba Moon dismissing Lewis for three. He picked out the fielder, Joffre Archer, at third man. Chase and pull right now with the crease into the second over. Great start for England. West Indies, 13 for two. And that third T20 international continues for you live right now on TalkSport 2. So if you've got the TalkSport app, you can swipe between England's cricket team and England's footballers. And now the station gives you that opportunity as the ball is won't fall through the midfield. Ollie Watkins, the goal scorer, does well just to feed Rico Lewis. Lewis, who's come close in the second half, Bellingham has hit the bar. Watkins missed the great chance through in a one-on-one -on -one late in the first half. England have had the opportunities to give themselves a substantial lead here and all but put the game to bed. Hasn't happened, but still they lead by a goal to nil. Greeks have already had to call for the cavalry. Rotter, on the edge of his own penalty area. Plays it back towards Mavropanos. Most handsome former Arsenal defender. He just lays the ball down the Greek right-hand side. Masouras is back there. Masouras playing it back. Rotter loses out. Bellingham with a lovely turn. And then a cultured little back heel flick through the legs of Rotter. Gallagher was the first of that. And he then cuts inside. But, oh, he was caught. I didn't think the referee was going to give him the decision. But he has done. Fouled by Siopsis. And England with a chance now to launch it in from just a yard in from the left-hand touchline and about 10 yards outside the penalty area. One nil in. Yeah, I've got to say, Jim, I don't think the Greeks look a patch on the team we saw at Wembley in regard to cutting edge or intent to try and chase the game, win the game. And uh, I think the game set up perfectly for a, a Kane-Watkins substitution and Kane to get the goal that is all valuable to us. It's certainly at Wembley a, a night of real high emotion after the, at that stage, very recent passing of George Baldock, who is remembered here again tonight. There's a, a big homemade banner, but it's a big one over on the far touchline, uh, which uh, has his name and his shirt number, number two, on it as well. And George still very much at the forefront of many people's thoughts as this free kick comes in deep from England and taking a bounce on its way through. Well defended in the end, because England's runners couldn't really get a, a clear avenue towards the ball and it's gone out of play for a goal kick that'll be taken by Black Dean Moss away to our left we've reached the hour mark and England lead by a goal in yeah absolutely super ball in there by Gordon in swinging ball landed in the six yard box not too sure what more you could do maybe uh, it's been critical maybe make sure it lands inside the far post to go straight in but a wonderful ball all the same now we were talking in the first half and a half time as well, today's England trivia question. The last five players to score on their England debuts. And I'll give you the answer in a couple of minutes' time. It's Greece work the ball forward again, and there is the electrifying pace of Kyle Walker, who covered so much ground so quickly. Uh, just to deny the opportunity to work it inside the penalty area where Ioannidis was waiting. And he just gobbled up the yards, was there first and could flip the ball away as a goal kick. Yeah, he did. And that, that's partly the difference between this game and the one at Wembley. You know, the, there was no Gahey, no Walker in the back line and their pace is absolutely valuable. And that's a good run forward from Yanulis, but Walker just turned the ball into him. And then get it forward from the back with Jordan Pickford. And he goes out towards the right-hand side for Nonny Madweke. And Lewis safely back for Mark Gahey. So the last five England players to score on their debut. We've got Ollie Watkins and Harry Kane who are bookending the list. The other three, Marcus Rashford, whose name was mentioned in that first half as the referee shows that another yellow card here to uh, one of the Greek players. Way over on the far side. Is it Siopsis that has just been cautioned there? Uh, in a little bit late. No, it's a fear is straight away a hand to acknowledge the fact that it was a poor challenge and he is in the book. So Watkins and Kane and Rashford, the other two, Callum Wilson and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. 
So they're the last five players to have scored a debut goal for England. Watkins, Calvert Lewin, Wilson, Rashford, Kay. Got a back this. Chances for Lewis Hall and Curtis Jones to add their names to that list tonight. 1 0 England lead with 62 minutes play. Ball stands with his right arm aloft. Wanting the uh, quick switch of play from England's right down to him on the left and it finds him down. And then he looks long, the ball teased over the top for Gordon. That was uh, easily headed away by Rotter. Colin Gallagher won the seconds but was closed out of it very quickly in the midfield by Masouras. Then Siopsis can play it for. And all of a sudden Greece will be out of break. No time playing, need is on the edge of the box. Good save, Pickford. That's as close as they've come in the second period by a long way. One incisive through ball down the inside right channel. And Yanidis held off his man. And it was the finish of a man right on top of his game. Right footed in towards the bottom right hand corner. And Pickford did well. He got a strong left hand to it. Look it past the post. Yeah, top quality save there. And England got let off on a couple of occasions. Eh? The, the save from Pickford. And secondly, the referee let play go on. And Gallagher had been booked beforehand. Just made a lunging tackle that he got away with. Alcas will take the corner. Greece is third. Really poor one, but he'll get a, a chance with their fourth to supply a better delivery. That one just swept away the near post by Rico Lewis. And gone more than three feet off the ground at any stage on its journey. Woeful corner on that occasion. Let's we'll see if he's got the running track and the pitch are rather close, which is impeding, I think, his run-up. There's a very small runner. When you consider how huge the bowl of this stadium is I mean we are miles from the near touchline it's it, it's like being at West Ham or at Longley fans will I talk about Chelmsford will know exactly where I'm coming from in comes the corner towards the near post I was going to say the second one can't be as bad as the first he gave it a good go England will try and bring it forward on the counter and Manweke has pushed his man over as he just tried to win a 50-50 towards halfway thought for the, ref for the moment the referee was going to book him he hasn't there will be a free kick to Greece much, much deeper though, almost on the uh, edge of the centre circle. Yeah, it was the office there just coming back, and I think he knew exactly what he was doing. Went to ground, bought the free kick, he knew no matter Wakey got the other side of him, he's finished. England leading 1 0, Ireland leading 1 0, Norway 3 1 up now in Slovenia. France still being held at home by Israel, and that early Tonali goal still gives Italy the lead in Belgium free kick to the Greeks just chipped inside the penalty area England with a high line and Pickford well he did misjudge it he's got away with it because the referee says he's been fouled but he waited for the ball to get there and he took a spiteful bounce and very nearly cleared his left hand in the end there was a contact between him and one of the Greek players who came down in front of him Rico Lewis tried to get it away. I don't think he was fouled. Have you seen the replay? I don't think he was fouled at all. You'd be hugely disappointed if that had been given against you at the other end. Yeah. But a free kick has been given. Two players just come to get together. There's some hip on hip, really. So here's another England debutant. Morgan Rogers is coming on. Harry Kane is on. And Jared Bowen makes his way on as well. And Morgan Rogers, a player who has had a magnificent 2024. He was the, the, the turn of last year, still playing in Middlesbrough's excellent League Cup run. And he scored a, a very, very good goal at Chelsea in the defeat in the second leg and him move to Aston Villa and he hasn't looked back so Rogers on for his England debut he's come out towards the the left hand side Manweke's gone off Gordon has gone off I think Ollie Watkins is the uh, other player he's made well Greece will bring the ball forward with Masora so really poor cross from him which it's certainly much more dangerous for the camera behind the goal than it was for Jordan Pickford. 
Why is that a play for a goal? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that triple change room? Well, the, the one, the, the glaring one for me is Madawaki. I, I don't see why you would take him off. He's been by far, in my opinion, England's best player. He's the one who's created the goal. And, uh, well have decided to uh, to go down that route to freshen things up slightly. I can see why Kane's come on. I think uh, Ollie Watkins has been a little bit ineffective, I've got to say, since the goal. Well, this is Harry Kane's first ever substitute appearance away to top 50 opposition in an England shirt. He has actually got five goals in his 13 substitute appearances for his country before today. England leading 1-0, we're at the midway point of the second half. Rodgers is on the left for England. Jared Bowen is on the right with Kane through the middle and Bellingham slightly further forward now, closer in support of Harry Kane. Greece will be able to bring the ball forward, using another England wicket in a moment as the Greeks try and make their way through the centre circle. England have led in this one for an hour, but haven't been able to add to that early Ollie Watkins goal. We would talk sport, and we'll be all together again. Sunday tea time, final game in this Nations League group stage. And England, is, if it stays this way, will go into it knowing that effectively it could become a shootout with Greece. If it stays this way, we will have to beat Ireland by one goal more than the Greeks winning Finland. What could be doing? Shopsis. Midway inside the England half. If it stays this way, of course. Right for the effort from Palkas. Stings the hands of Jordan Pickford. Comfortable save. He'll be in no hurry to restart play. We'll get news of that latest England wicket from Talksport's Sam Ella. Two more to bring you, Jim. Extraordinary start for England into the fourth. West Indies 21 for four. Fourth to go is Roston Chase driving a wide ball from Mamu to first slip. And before that, Archer bowling Toran, who looked to go big into the leg side. Mamu has two wickets. Archer one. Powell and Hetmeyer now with the crease. West Indies in big trouble into the fourth. 21 for four. And he continues on TalkSport 2. Remember, if England win that game, they have won that five-match series. TalkSport 2, the place for Constantelius is uh, going to be coming on in a moment for Greece. England with more defending to do here, but the quality of service for the likes of Yanidis has been really poor. And that's another illustration of that. Balling from Yanoulis just sailed through the penalty. Game. And now... The latest change, Masaurus coming on. And is uh, going to come on to replace him with just over 20 minutes to go, Stuart. Sorry, Jim, I, I didn't even worry about that. This Tannoy system is a little bit violent, to be quite honest with you. But I think from England's point of view, they seem comfortable in the game. They don't seem in any hurry to uh, to push on and attempt to win this game by 2 or 3 nil. That's, that's what I would say. I think they could have really affected this Greek team a little bit more than they actually have and make no mistake they've been in very comfortable within the game from the start uh, to, to up to now don't worry I, I was just saying what a good job you were doing that you were man of the match you didn't miss anything I thought you were just giving the uh, the Tannoy man a little pat on the back there the ball is over on the Greek left yeah it's working isn't it that Tannoy I can confirm it's working and being held and heard everywhere across the city from the uh, Acropolis to the Parthenon. We're here in the northern suburbs of the Greek capital tonight on what is uh, a still and a relatively warm night for mid-November in this part of the world as uh, Carl Walker's got some defending to do and he's put under pressure and he very cleverly buys the free kick. He's kept the ball within playing distance but stopped his run and made contact from Yanidis inevitable. And as soon as he felt it, he went down. Why the old defending from the England starting captain tonight, Carl Walker, the uh, yard band now with Harry Kane, of course. There will be a free kick to England, and uh, they're in no hurry to take it. Pickford, though, on a yellow card from the first half, four delay in the restart, suddenly realised that he could be the man that was deemed to be culpable if England don't get on with it quickly here. So he sprinted out towards the far touchline, and he fires it forward now, left-footed. Kane going up for it, it's knocked away from him. Brought down through the midfield, Yanidis will make a run for it. Palkas trying to slip it through, England smuggle it back for Pickford with Gahey just getting his foot there first, steer it away from Zephyrus. And as it's launched for by England, 
looking for Jude Bellingham clears him good defended by Kulirakis and Mavropanos is going to be able to bring it forward only one goal conceded in their last five games Greece only one defeat in their last ten only two defeats in the last 24 home matches but as they stand right now England will be extending their unbeaten streak to eight away games Bellingham himself there best run for I think end of a decade now we've got to go back to the Roy Hodgson days for the last time England went more than seven games unbeaten away from home there's Pelkas on the Greek right and he's continued his run forward he's been well found there by Siopsis Pelkas to Siopsis again Pelkas once more trying to take it on and the referee has given a free kick England's way for a handball Pelkas went down trying to buy the free kick England take the free kick quickly and get it forward here towards Morgan Rogers. Rogers across the edge of the area Harry Kane from the edge of the D look for the top right hand corner but Vlacadimos read it yeah good counter attack there by England Greece just run out of options for going forward and the counter attack it ended up with uh, Kane's effort at the edge of the box good shape on the ball goalkeeper read it well Kane unable to score what would have been his 69th England goal and his sixth as a sub. His Palkas seeing a little bit more of the ball now around the edge of the England box, but again England can get that one away. The fine Kane and Kane will just be able to buy a throw off Palkas. He knew that he was uh, off balance, but flicked it into the Greek number ten and he goes out of play for a throw 19 goals for club and country already this season for Harry Kane 17 of those in Bayern Munich colours goal tonight will be his 60th as England captain his Hall poking the ball for looking for Jones Ron Bagwell Bellingham Marking a ball over the top. It's going to be chased after by Jared Bowen, who's only a late caller into this England squad because of uh, injury. So many players pulling out. There's nine of the players, eight of the original call up, and then Jared Branthwaite, who was added to the squad, and uh, he then too had to withdraw. So nine players that Newcastle might have wanted to pick for tonight unavailable. Mm -hmm. Just hope that we don't lose Concer as well for the uh, game of the weekend. In the next in action against Ireland, 5 o'clock on Sunday, live on Talk Sport. Pickford having to come out of his penalty area. And the bounce again, a little bit lively, threatened to clear him, but he read it well enough in the end because he put the brakes on to make sure the ball's just on the way down by the time he got his head to it to get it clear. Siopsis, Pelkas, out of the right-hand side of the box, Rotter, little give-and-go into the edge of the penalty area, but behind his targets, and England can bring it away with Gallagher, he's only got Kane ahead of him, Kane taking on one blue shirt, couldn't beat a second, he was well defended by Kuliarakis, and he will now work it out towards the far touchline, and Greece again, as they did about this stage of the first half, beginning to get into the ascendancy. A little bit ominous. Yeah, they just can't find a pass at the moment when they get into this advanced last third. Um, and they're in England's box once again. Rico Lewis trying to block the cross. Couldn't do so. Sails right through the penalty area from the far side of this. That will be controlled by the right bank Rotter, who is uh, forced away by Morgan Rogers back inside his own half. And then played for by Mavropanos. Don't forget all the reaction from Lee Carsley and England's headline makers with our correspondent Faker others after this game. The ball has played through the box again. Laid back, but a snatched right-footed effort drifts well wide of Pickford's left-hand post. And although Greece have had more attempts than England in the game now, still England, you feel over the whole piece, worthy of the 1-0 lead. Oh, there's no doubt England are, but... I think with a bit more tempo about what we were trying to achieve, we might have extended that lead and made life a, a lot easier for ourselves. But we certainly bossed the game. The crowd at this moment in time are urging their, the Greeks on to uh, la have a last hurrah at this. Now remember, there's a massive difference between winning this by one and winning this by two in terms of the head-to-head -head. because if England can win this by two then they will have that head-to-head -head advantage and that means that they will only need to match Greece's result on Sunday to finish top of the group and win this 2-0 tonight they will be top going into that final game 
If they only win by one, they're going to need to win at the weekend by at least one more than Greece or get a better result than the Greeks do. They go to Helsinki as Bellingham brings the ball forward now for England towards the edge of the area. Oh, it's come off the inside of the post and he will be bundled over the line by Gallagher. There is the second goal. And England are top of the group. Jude Bellingham scything forward through the midfield. Took it towards the edge of the penalty area. Everyone backing off him. I think the ball over the line by the time Colin Gallagher made sure. It may well go down as a flag and Emos own goal. But the bottom line is that England are two goals up in Athens. Revenge for last month's Wembley defeat is incoming. And England with 13 minutes to go here on top of the group. Yeah, I think that goal could end up seeing us winning the group now. Looking at things, I think certainly that is a big, big lift for us. Bellingham driving through the middle of the pitch, opened the goal up, good strike, goalkeeper went down to his right, canned off the post, hit the back of his legs and in. Well, it's got to go down as an own goal. And this is Vlakadimos, very unlucky, just a little bit late in trying to make the save. And as he went down, his legs were up in the air, about four or five feet up in the air, and it's come back off the post and looped up, hit the back of his leg and just rolled over the line. Gallagher was there to make sure that the ball was over the line without the need for a touch. And England lead by two goals to nil with 12 minutes to go. And they made another change in the aftermath of that goal. Gallagher's come off and Morgan Gibbs-White has come on. Gibbs-White who made his debut in Ireland Played the last 15 minutes there. He was injured for last month's games, but featuring again tonight another man who had an extensive under-21 experience under Carsley. So he comes on for Gallagher with 11 minutes to go here on Talk Sport. Greece nil, England two. Yep, it's beginning to look like a very, very good night's work for England. Uh, they come away, they can keep this, keep a clean sheet between now and the end of the game. All of a sudden, this result's looking very good with a team that had a lot of changes to it potentially Jarrah Bowen has conceded a free kick a little bit of wrestling going on over on the far touchline with Yanoulis so Greece with an opportunity to immediately halve the deficit ball swung in headed down by Hall and then bounced behind him there were appeals from some of the Greek players for a handball and we got an isolated murmur from those in the crowd as well so the VAR will be having a look at it that's Dean Dankert but no suggestion that play needs to stop Greece have had to go all the way back to their goalkeeper Vlakadimos Vlakadimos the Mavropanos and now he will get it forward a long right footed crossfield ball that just cleared his club teammate Jared Bowen he looked to pick out Yanoulis but it's gone out for a throw that will be taken by England and with 10 minutes to go should be plenty of opportunities just to manage the situation safely here and make sure that England can hold on to this two goal victory yeah you would suspect now this possession based play should click in and England just take the sting out of the Greeks the Greeks are thoroughly disappointed tonight I've got to say um, any time they've got in advanced areas they've found to find a, a telling pass in any way shape or form this would be only their second defeat in the last 17 Nations League games. They've conceded two tonight. They'd only conceded four in those previous 16 matches in this competition. So more than half the goals they've ever conceded in the uh, Nations League now have been scored by England. Paul working the ball down the line for Morgan Rogers to chase. He can't get there and it's gone out. And no change is going to be made. As you might be able to hear. And Mandalos is going to be coming on. Player who scored against Ireland last month. 33 year old veteran coming on into the uh, centre of midfield, the uh, AEK man. For the last eight minutes plus stoppage time. A couple of Greek youngsters just down in front of us. Uh, still keeping the faith. They've got their scarves lifted above their head but by and large around us there's an air of frustration Yanidis trying to get in claiming he's being held back there by Gehi referee didn't agree 
the ball is safely in the hands of Jordan Pickford. Greece nil, England two. And with everybody that had to pull out because of injury, because of everything that had happened at Wembley last month, I don't think there were too many that saw this coming. Here's Morgan Gibbs White driving forward now for England. Getting it out towards the right hand side. Jared Bowen back for Gibbs White again. The angle is tight. He's pulled it in and he's a little back heel flick in for three. A beautiful goal. Sets the seal on it for England. Magnificent driving play by Morgan Gibbs White. Making his way forward. Goes out towards the far touch line. In from Gibbs White. A little back heel flick from Curtis Jones with his right foot behind his trailing leg. England have another goal scoring debutant. Excellent performance from Jones in the midfield. He's marked it with a goal. It's Greece nil, England three. Yeah, absolutely superb goal there. Great England sweeping from one end to the other. Very, very clinical. And when it come into the box, just pulled back and a deft back heel beat the goalkeeper into the far corner. And this result is looking very, very good for England. Two goals in five minutes. England three up away from home. Now they have that little bit of insurance. Because even if this would end 3 2, the advantage between the two would be in England's favour because they would have scored more away goals in that head to head than Greece. So now there is some serious insurance for England. Curtis Jones scoring on his England debut. That's Greece nil, England three. Now the Greeks will bring the ball forward again. Over on the far touchline with Yanoulis. Taking it out towards the left hand touchline. Three inside the penalty area waiting for him. Ball play back is then outside the box for Rotter. Rotter sliding it down the line. Making sure that they're not committing a a foul just on the edge of the box, it was Jones who was at pains to put his hands up to show that there was no contact going on there. The Greeks have to rework it through the midfield, Zafiris back down for Pelkas. Pelkas to Rota. Now Mantolas in the heart of the midfield. He's lending the ball out towards the right. A little flick header comes in, looking for Yanidis. Rota couldn't quite get the angle right on that, Lewis will clear. Will recycle it 20 yards outside the penalty area, driven forward and then chested down and volleyed away on the edge of the box by Jared Bowen. And towards the far touch line, he's working back through the midfield with Mavropanos. Mavropanos to Rotter, and the place has been silenced. It certainly has. There was a period just leading into the second goal where you felt the Greek crowd were trying to lift their team and, and get it going on about 75 minutes, but. England's second goal certainly killed all that off, and uh, the third. England well, fans, please remain in their seats after the match. They will leave after the order of the police. Harry Kane, referee plays a good advantage. Bowen was caught. Kane has got it. He's got past one challenge. He's in the penalty area, and he did well to dig his foot around it under pressure to get a cross in. But that cross sails behind the goal. And out of play. Five to go. It's Greece nil, England three here on Talk Sport. And a sense that your reaction on the sports bar on 03717 is going to be much more positive tonight than it has been under several recent England performances. But this has been their best performance in the group by some distance. Yeah, th that would be fair to say. Even, uh, I mean, the res certainly the result has been a wonderful result tonight. There's no doubt about that if it stays as is or, or improves. Um, the, the only thing I would say, I think we probably could have put them under the pump a little bit more in the first half, you know, supplying the ball out wide. But, listen, if, if possession football takes some out of their, their tank, if you like, that weakens the legs that end up get us getting goals late in the game are well and good. Well, you have talked many times about it being a squad game, about the need for dynamic substitutions, for players to be able to come off the bench and be able to influence proceedings, and we've seen exactly that tonight. That is for sure. There's Janidis getting it back on the edge of the D, right-footed effort, well blocked by Hall, because Pickford might just have been struggling there, hard to see from this angle, but 
Wall made that academic. He put in a good block. Now Bowen has got it over on the far touch line, but he can't get it away effectively. Greece working through the midfield. Kane, who picked up a bang to the head uh, a few minutes ago, but he's OK. We'll just try and get it forward now. Ultimately goes out for a throw. It'll be taken on the Greek left over on the far touch line. Remember, the Premier League football returns to talk sport a week Saturday, November the 23rd. Leicester taking on Chelsea. It's with Rashman and the award-winning team at the King Power on Saturday week. This Saturday, WSL action from Spurs against Arsenal and Chelsea against Manchester City. Now, those games on talk sport from 1.45 and 5.30 respectively. Now we've got League One action, Exeter Lincoln and Stockport Wrexham. Your double bill in League One this Saturday. And then on Sunday, we'll all reconvene with you for England against Ireland. Where a win, as things stand right now, we'll see England automatically promoted back to Nations League A. Lewis playing the ball over towards the far side. Ireland. Uh, still a goal up at home to Finland in a match that has now gone into stoppage time. And Evan Ferguson with the goal late in the first half there. In Nations League League A, still Belgium nil, Italy one, and France nil, Israel nil. Italy in the quarterfinals if they avoid defeat tonight. And France, with that other result, will be in the quarterfinals with them as well. From this group, Finland will be relegated as things stand right now. B3, Kazakhstan already relegated today. Uh, Norway 4-1 up away to Slovenia are going to be top of their group, along with Austria. They'll both be on 10 points and three clear of Slovenia. And in C4, North Macedonia lead Latvia by a golden nil, and that will be enough for them to be promoted. Greece bring it away from the edge of their own penalty area again. Looks like putting a little bit of pressure on, but unfair pressure. And ultimately came from Morgan Rogers. And it's a free kick that will be taken quickly by the Greek goalkeeper, Vlakadimos. Unlucky as the second one goes against him for an OG. This is a night where England have led for all but the opening six and a half minutes. And they've been very good value for the victory. And 3-0 over the, the whole game is probably about right because in the second half uh, it's the experience of uh, those who've seen plenty of action at this level before has uh, been enough to get them over the line there have been some excellent performances from the young Tyros as well he's working for with Zephyrus now to the far touch line the Greek left it's moving coming off the ball from Yanidis Bowen might be able to get it away another block challenge comes in on the edge of the penalty area Carl Walker back defending, he's done okay in the second half at centre half. But still, they haven't got it clear. Greece trying to work it down towards Pelkas on the right hand side of the box. It looked as though probably an offside flag should come up. It didn't, but no harm done from an England perspective because Hall can very definitely get his way out of trouble and then Rogers will help it down the line. And we're four minutes away from the end of this game as we go into stoppage time. England, three goals to the good students. Yep, and as I say, it'll be a result that Lee Coesley will be absolutely delighted with, you know, to come here under a bit of pressure in regard to uh, one or two bits and pieces that have gone on away from the football criteria, if you like, with pull-outs and that type of thing. Uh, it's been an excellent result. Who's most impressed you? Madawaki, I, I think, has been very good. Also, as well, Curtis Jones. I, I think he's been comfortable on the ball um, every time he's had the ball and he's got himself on the score sheet as well so those two will be the pick for me so here's Morgan Rogers on the left hand side of the penalty area making his way forward as England uh, look to set the seal on it with goal number four but he can't find a way through and the retreating Greek midfielders the fearest can win the ball back Pelkas helps it across the edge of his own box and just got a little bit nervy pretty quickly for Kuliarakis under pressure from Bowen Toe pokes it away Greece will bring the ball forward and smoke drifts across the stadium now uh, from uh, three or four bits of pyro that were in evidence just in the Greek supporters away to our right hand side the lingering effects of those now in the atmosphere as Greece bring it forward looking for a consolation goal but remember even one would not cause England too many undue alarms as the shot comes in from distance Pickford blocked it diving to his left 
and Hall has been really solid on his England debut in this second half was able to knock it away Forty comes again from Rotter to Pelkas Pelkas in the midfield for Mantolas Mantolas down towards the right hand touchline rolling the studs of his right boot over the top of the ball and then just drives it forward aimlessly straight through for Jordan Pick. Yeah, they've been really disappointing tonight, the Greeks. I was expecting a lot more from them. I'm quite pleased that I haven't seen a lot more from them, but um, they'll be very disappointed with this performance. Pickford gets it away from the edge of the box. Sails forward, 60 yards, 70 yards, flicked on there towards the edge of the penalty area. Comes back down again towards Curtis Jones. Jones trying to drive forward. Couldn't get himself into a shooting position. Last England player to score twice on his debut, Kieran Richardson. I'm not sure that he ever scored another international goal after that. Curtis Jones might just be able to emulate that, but not too long left. It's about a minute and a half to go here. Morgan Rogers making his way forward. Just trying to slip it into Gibbs White to his left. Kane comes back and wins it back. Finds Bowen. Bowen can't get himself into a shooting position. And a sliding challenge comes in. Heard a yelp of pain from here as Bowen had just caught his man. And it's a free kick to Greece just outside that penalty area. The last knockings here with England three goals to the good. Yep, it's certainly been a good night's work coming here, keeping a clean sheet especially. The way the Greeks cut us open at home, you thought... Mm, can, have we got the ability to come and keep a clean sheet? We certainly defended pretty well. The Greeks have been poor in regard to their final pass. Definitely that's helped us out a little bit, but we've been pretty well focused so far. So far. Retaining that clean sheet will be important. Hall has done well. He's going to be able to get it away as Constantelias went down. And then England forced into a more central area with Bellingham. Just kept his head under pressure and works it out towards Rico Lewis. Four minutes very nearly up. Plenty of empty seats around the stadium now as the Greek fans have headed for the hills. Be so disappointed with the way their side have played tonight. But this has been so much better from England. Standing ovation from the England supporters away to our right-hand side. What a difference a month makes. Completely different England side tonight. A mix and match element to it. So many withdrawals, but those that are here did their country proud. England leading from the seventh minute. Never really looked likely to surrender that advantage. And they're top of the group with one to play. Beat Ireland, and they are promoted. It is finished. Greece nil, England three. Well, job done. They had to come here had to make sure they won the game and try to win it basically by as many goals as possible. And they've got that job done, England. Nobody can complain. And some seriously good performances from those England players as well. I'm going to give you a lowdown between now and 10 o'clock on what's been happening outside the ground because it's not been good for England fans. We'll get on to that a little bit later. The talk sport is asking you away for questions. Uh, and we're uh, getting more information all the time on that. So I'll bring you that very shortly. But in terms of matters on the pitch, England had a job to do. There were a lot of pullouts, a lot of withdrawals. The manager, the interim manager, made a big call before the game by leaving the captain on the bench. And it worked. At times, Greece had a lot of joy, a lot of possession in the England half, Stuart Pearce. Ultimately, you cannot argue with a 3-0 away win in a pressure game. No, you certainly can't. As I say, they did come into the game under a little bit of pressure, I've got to say. Certainly losing the first game. Uh, you'd have taken 3-0 all day long. Keeping a clean sheet. Never really looked like conceding in any way, shape or form. And it was pretty clinical. I felt as though some of our possession work was a vanity project, I've got to say. But... The bottom line is, when we upped the tempo, we were by far the best team. We were, and there were some great individual performances. Um, I want to pick out Jude Bellingham as well. As the England fans come over, basically to the to our right, there's been a whole lower tier of empty seats where England fans could have been. Three and a half thousand have been up in the uh, top tier, and they're applauding the England players back. England fans travel away. They spend a lot of money. They've got a huge commitment and they deserve that applause from the England players and again in it back the players from the fans uh, as well all the uh, George Cross flags with the names of clubs draped in front of those uh, England fans as ever 
when England are on the road. Some terrific performances. I thought Jude Bellingham, first of all, let's give him credit. He's not, a, not been a pull-out. He wasn't one of those who decided to stay at home. You know, it gets a reputation for being arrogant sometimes, being a bit of a big-time player, and I understand why. And he lives up to that sometimes. And he is a big-time player, let's not forget that. But he's come here with England, and I think he played really well. I thought he gave commitment to the cause, surging runs, getting us upfield, putting in tackles. He was on an early yellow, remember, as well. And he played the whole game. I thought Jude Bellingham had one of his better games in an England shirt, Stuart. Yeah, I, th- I think he was certainly steady away within the game. You know, he was uh, he played a part in the the pass that cleared uh, Madawaku uh, down the right hand side for the first goal. Definitely surged on, had a contribution certainly for the. I take it it was an own goal off the goalkeeper. He yeah. hit the inside of the post. So certainly he's had that contribution in the game and played the full ninety minutes. Well, the ones you picked out, I, I think, were exceptional. Curtis Jones. I'm a massive fan anyway, um, but his performance brought a joy to my heart. Madwaki as well, and I was surprised he was taken off because he was causing havoc out wide. Both those players, and, and they're raw England players. Curtis Jones' debut tonight, he's got a goal. He's put in arguably the best performance from all the England players, certainly one of the best performances. And he looks so at home, so comfortable on the ball in an England shirt. Yeah, it, very relaxed on the ball. Almost, well, I wouldn't say too relaxed, but at times you know almost arrogant on the ball and that's not a bad trait to have in, in many ways but certainly he's come in with really good club form and he's brought that straight in into uh, to an England performance and you know what I think uh, there's a lot to thank Arna Slot for because he's trusting Curtis Jones in the Liverpool midfield the player himself is rewarding the new manager with performances he's now got that long awaited England debut and there's a big future, I think, in an England shirt for Coach Curtis Jones. I thought he was terrific tonight. And Medwaki as well has brought club form to the international stage. It wasn't just that he was effective and he caused problems. He was really good to watch as well. It was an enjoyable performance from an England player. I don't think there's anything better than uh, seeing a, a wide player taking his man on, getting to the touchline uh, and really running with and without the ball. And he'd done, exact, he done exactly that for the time he was on the pitch. I thought he was a real threat all night. Uh, we are going to get a uh, reaction from the England camp, including uh, an interview with Lee Carsley as well. It'll either be in this show before 10 o'clock or in the sports bar after the sports bar. Getting ready to take your calls. In fact, they'll take your calls now if you uh, want to make that call. 03717 But let's just take a look at Group B2. England now top of the group on 12 points. Uh, their head-to-head with Greece is better. So uh, that's all that matters. Really, it doesn't really matter about goal difference. The head-to-head is better. Uh, Greece on 12 as well Ireland won tonight they beat Finland 1-0 it means Ireland uh, will have to go through a relegation plough Finland are relegated from the group so it remains Sunday to be seen if England get the job done against Ireland they won in Dublin and I think we would all expect England to get the job done but you never know then they will be promoted back to League A of the Nations League and yet there was a little wobble in the middle of it all, but that table looks very, very healthy from an England point of view. And I think Thomas Tuchel will be happy if England get the job done live on TalkSport on Sunday, Stuart, so he can just get off clean slate, Nations League is gone, get on with the qualifiers. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this, we always felt as though we'd be comfortable in winning the group, but that game at Wembley against Greece really put us on the back foot in many ways, you know. I think it shook us to the core a little bit, and... And credit to the players and the coaching staff and manager to come out here and get a result of this ilk. Yeah, absolutely. They, they had a job to do, and they did it. There were questions being asked. Harry Kane I want to talk about because, yeah, Ollie Watkins came in and got the goal, and people will say, well, yeah, then the, the decision is justified, and I get that. But Harry Kane's the captain of England, was left out, came on, and I thought he did a really good job for England, took the captain's armband no problem, had no issues seemingly whatsoever, certainly didn't affect his performance. He wasn't in a bad mood. There was no bad reaction from an established, world-class England player. He did the job. He showed all the others how to react when things go against you, Harry Kane, tonight. Well, look, he's always led from the front as the England captain. That's why he is the England captain. You know, he's uh, he's got a mentality that puts the group... Uh, first, there's no doubt about that. He's been brilliant when he's led the line, but 
sometimes it shows more about the character by leading the line when you're not actually on the pitch. Yeah, Grace did cause us problems. I think Jordan Pickford um, had one or two jobs to do. He had to make decisions and did them well. One player at the back I want to talk about is Mark Gahey, who I think it was his 21st cap tonight. And he looks at home. He looks like he's a first choice centre half pick now for England. I think he is the first choice for England. I've always thought that over the last couple of months, to be fair, and going back to the tournament, he's a massive plus. He reads danger, he gets in front of players when he should. Um, and he's got a little bit of pace that gets out of problems. And there's no surprise to me that he wasn't playing in that home game against Greece, you know, which cost us. Uh, there was a little moment on the left, right in front of where we are. So we're just to the right of the halfway line, just uh, along, basically parallel with the edge of uh, what was Jordan Pickford's penalty area in the second half. And towards the end, England were just seeing out time, making sure they kept the clean sheet, got the 3-0 win. And there's a little triangle of Lewis Hall, Curtis Jones and Morgan Rogers keeping the ball on this left-hand side. And they were doing it. They weren't being arrogant with it. They weren't taking uh, the mickey out of the opposition. They were just keeping the ball with good football, addressing the ball well, passing it to each other, using it sensibly. I just thought, wow, that, that's England's future right there. You've got three players on the pitch making their England debuts. And I, I suddenly felt a kind of a warmth. I know I'm, I, I'm basking in the glow of a 3-0 win, and we're top of the group. But I just felt a, a real positive feeling that there were three England debutants and they looked so comfortable on the ball. Well, we've always prided ourselves that we feel as though we've got some of the best youngsters in world football coming through the, the ranks, you know, and uh, aside from the ones that have been regular mainstays with England, we feel as though there's, there's others to come and take their place, and uh, I think that just demonstrated that this evening. Um, just a, a word on Curtis Jones' goal. That's uh, a terrific little flick for a player making his England debut. Brilliant. You know, great set up by Jared. Gibbs White as well played a big part in that, pulling the ball back. But there was uh, Curtis Jones with a death flick. Behind him was Harry Kane available if he missed it. And I think there was another player beyond that as well. Rogers, I think, behind him. So it was good to see, to be fair. And that was just the icing on the cake. This is a wonderful result tonight for us. It, it really is. Uh, no relaxing. They've still got to get the job completed on Sunday. We'll be there live on TalkSport from four. Let me just address the situation. We're going to hear from players and from Lee Carsley on this show or the next show sports bar coming up at 10 03717 but the situation outside the ground before the game the England fans largely treated like animals while the game's been ongoing the second half was ongoing I was gathering more and more information from fans who've been in the England end tonight so on social media there were some eyewitness accounts that involved the following tear gas and pepper spray for England fans as they entered the ground one fan posted that they'd arrived with an hour and a half till kickoff but only got inside the stadium with five minutes to go. Fans were allegedly ambushed by police in riot gear and pinned against fences. Uh, fans were trying to queue but got tear gassed. Police were hitting and tear gassing England fans. These are all different eyewitness reports from England fans. A woman fell over a barrier trying to stay out of the way of what the police were doing. Uh, two friends of mine messaged me. They were in the England and they left at half time fearing that it would get really ugly at full time so they didn't stay for the whole game which is a shame uh, the Greek police have been accused by England fans of being unnecessarily aggressive um, groups were split up because of police being heavy handed there were people with, who should have been in groups with their friends were stranded didn't know where their friends were a really awful situation to be in in a foreign country in the suburbs of a city you don't know there have also been accusations that tickets were not properly checked and it's believed an exit gate was open to let fans in to the stadium that's potentially as we know extremely extremely dangerous there needs to be some sort of investigation on this it's been shambolic uh, the way the away end has been described as a disgrace the treatment of the fans described as a disgrace as well now it's all on UEFA's watch yet again we've been here before all of those eyewitness accounts are on social media or they're from people that I know personally so if UEFA want to contact those people for evidence they should do it TalkSport have contacted UEFA. UEFA told us it's a matter for the Greek police. Well, this Nations League game is on UEFA's watch, so UEFA have to get involved. They have to have some sort of investigation. They have to find out exactly what happened and what went wrong for those England fans who got here seemingly in really good time and yet found themselves pepper sprayed and tear gassed by Greek police. Why were the Greek police so heavy-handed? 
that question needs to be asked as well. And listen, I'm not painting England fans as angels at every single game they go to. But certainly the England fans that travel away, and we travel with them, the TalkSport team, I can't remember seeing any aggression, any violence at an away game for England. I, I just can't remember it. So I don't know why the Greek police felt they had to be so heavy-handed. Yes, there was the situation at the Euros final at Wembley, which was an absolute disgrace. That's not great. That does not look good from an England point of view. I get that. But England fans travelling away, I, I do not see the need to have police in riot gear with tear gas and pepper spray and batons being waved about and hitting people. Don't get it at all. There needs to be some sort of investigation. Listen, if you have been part of that as well, I'm pretty sure that uh, Jamie and Jason on the sports bar will want to hear what you've uh, experienced here in Athens tonight because that doesn't look good and I don't think that's going to be the end of the matter as well. Ironically, the end of the game, there was uh, half a dozen or so flares that were lit up in the crowd opposite us, led to smoke billowing across the pitch and that was the Greek fans uh, and I just thought to myself there's no doubt England fans will be blamed for that definitely was not the England fans so if you want to get in touch with the sports bar um, to get your calls in on that after 10 03717 is the number to call let's get an update in the cricket from Talk Sports Sam Allard five wickets for England in the power play had them in the perfect position. West Indies really struggling early on at 37 for five. For the sixth wicket partnership, a good one for the West Indies. Now worth 46 runs. The captain, Rodman Powell, leading from the front, not out on 35, being well supported from Mario Shepherd, who has 22 runs to his name. Archer Mahmood, brilliant in the power play. Archer with the wicket. Mahmood has three to his name. He's having some series. Also a brilliant run out from the very young, talented all-rounder, Jacob Bethel. But Powell and Shepherd. They're rebuilding nicely. 11 overs gone. The score now 83 for five. Sam, thank you very much. Um, Stuart Pearce, Thomas Tuchel, no doubt somewhere will either have been watching it or will watch this game. What will he have made of it? Um, I think that the, the glaring thing for me, for, for him, will be strength in depth. I, I certainly, uh, that's proved that. We've got nine players missing from this squad uh, and still they were good enough to come away to Greece and get a 3-0 victory so that in itself sends a message out um, I think that's the main thing I think you know Curtis Jones's performance good very good Madawaki definitely very good as well and there were some sterling performances within the group I think from an England manager's point of view it's quite an exciting group to take over yeah I think there's so many positives in some ways you might look at it and think you know, in, in a way, it's a shame it's only 18 months and because he's got so many good young players to work with. As, as we said, there were three debutants knocking the ball between each other at the end of the game and it was a joy to see. What I would say as well, and I know he got his goal in Ollie Watkins, um, we've still got the situation, the World Cup is in 18 months' time or however long, maybe more, and Harry Kane will be that much older mm. and... I'm still waiting for somebody to come along and a, a real top quality centre forward to really come along and rival what we've already got. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I would say from this. Do you I, not see Watkins as that? I'm not sure yet. Honestly, I'm not sure. Is he going to be a Rooney, uh, an Owen, um, a Kane is Ollie Watkins going to be that player is Solanke going to be exactly the shrug of the shoulders and the grimace on your face told me everything but it's a high standard they're setting well, of course it is but it's a high standard that wins World Cups yeah but what what I didn't want Spurs or Villa fans to feel is that we're having a pop at those players because oh, no. they're very very good no. players but... well, exactly but you know are they ready to lead the line consistently and get the goals, 68 goals in 100-odd games, you know what I mean? That is a, a really high bar, and that high bar hasn't been enough at this moment in time to get our hands on silverware. I, I'm waiting for someone else to come along that maybe, you know, like when Rooney come on the scene or Owen come on the scene, this wonder kid, mm. you know, that, that set the world alight sort of thing. Can we find another one of those? Yeah, we haven't had a striker. We've had, we've had the wonder kid in, like, the Duke Bellingham, for example, yep. but in terms of a striker... Somebody like Liam Delap, who has taken a little while, he's had some loan spells, but actually looks really good in this first half of the season at Ipswich. And, and then you're, you're wondering if next season, if they if they get relegated or even if they don't get relegated, does he go on to a bigger club and try 
to establish himself there and score goals there. Will that t- will he time it just right for that World Cup? Possibly. That's what you're hoping, I think. Well, exact. More, the more options, the better. That's the bottom line on this one. So, um, but I think more positives, way more positives than negatives. Yeah, there's not really a lot that he that he has to change. I mean, yes, th- there's maybe the culture issue that has to be addressed. The culture issue that Gareth Southgate got so right, players wanting to come and play for England, a lot of togetherness within the squad. Mm -hmm. That got us so far. Thomas Tuchel needs to make sure that that is there in abundance and add to it. That's the whole point of him coming in, that he takes us that step further to a trophy, to a World Cup, hopefully. It certainly has. You know, I would look at it and say, what was all the good that Gareth Southgate done? And we could put a list together ourselves.